stops him from like 30 sessions ago, so I think I'm good. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, all right, I'll try to sum it up as best I can. Uh, last time uh, we got together, you guys um, sort of decompressed from the battle against the ancient Black Shadow Dragon. Um, Self care, care for friends, care for allies, care for babies, um, arts and crafts, macaroni. Uh, checking in with all your NPCs, followers, companions, and um, NPC patron. Uh, little backstory divulsion um, on a few characters, which was kind of exciting to hear. Uh, and then ultimately agreed to head back out into the Great Sea so that you could um, go speak to the mermaids of Tyria who had requested some assistance from the surface world, uh, even though they hate the surface world more than anything else. Well, no, there's there's a lot of stuff they hate. Um, they could all be second edition rangers. That's so much hate they've got. Um, but you guys arrived and began your talks with the Queen of the Mermaids. And that is where we left off, was as you guys were about to exchange information uh, back and forth. Uh, about what's happening, what should be done, that sort of thing. So if I recall, uh, we left off on uh, the map for Tyria, and we can just kind of continue from there. So we got everybody, and we're good to go? I think uh, so. Yeah, Yeah. Ness, Ness will be here in a second. She just got up to go get something to drink. Okay. Uh, in that case, uh, take it away, diplomats. Well, you're the last, uh, you're the last person yeah. to talk. So. I mean, I, I just looked at Skull, um, and I'm like, this guy seems to know how to talk to mermaids. Maybe, maybe I will listen. Okay. Or sorry, not Skull, Pharaohs. Sorry, sorry. Oh, to Pharaohs. Okay. All all eyes turn uh, to to Pharaohs then, as you kind of turn to him, and everyone sort of looks to him also. All right, uh, Pharaohs are kind of like. He'll like adjust his like pauldrons. He kind of like puffs up his chest a bit, and he's like, uh, "Hello, Queen." Like he dips his head a bit, and it's like, uh, "My name is uh, Pharos Black Talon." You okay. Um, and uh, we might be in uh, need of assistance. I, we here uh, adventurers come on the behalf of the humans. You see that they've. They require our assistance, and we are ready to aid. Our people have a... We feel that the hu... Uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the humans is a mess has gotten out of hand. The sea wolf seeks our assistance, and we feel that uh, without the... Uh, it's in our best interests of our various peoples that we assist them with their problems. If you have, uh, if you're able to render aid, it would be greatly appreciated, my queen. All right, your bubbly words uh, bubble forth, and. And as, guys... um, oh, yeah. as he does his speech, I, um, Shoo. where's the orca in relationship to me? <laughs> um, I mean, it's kind of a, where you are is, is where you're at sort of thing. Yeah. So you guys are on the central, um, platform where you petition yeah. uh, to the queen and he's just kind of drifting back, uh, back here for a little bit. Yeah, I uh, turn into a seal. Okay. There was, I assume my seal form. And I do like sort of acrobatic tricks and swirls to like punctuate the things that he's doing while um, staying far away from, as far away from the orcs as I can. I'm pretty scared of it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Orca would definitely want to eat a seal. Uh, when you turn into a seal, it becomes very interested in 
uh, that. I'm assuming uh, after a yeah, minute okay. of uh, seal performance, you're going to try to glam bard everybody? Yeah. Or or put the whammy on five people? Yes. Uh, which five people are you trying to put the whammy on? I, um... Person. And keep keep in mind the ranges as well. Um, I don't know if there is any for Glambard, um, but there might be. It might say a certain yeah. number of creatures within such and such number of feet, yada, yada, yada. I think you have to be within 60 feet of the people you're trying to uh, put the whammy on. Sorry, based on the knowledge, my knowledge of court functions and like how deferential my observations of how deferential people have been to others around mm -hmm. them, the people that I think would hold the most sway over the. Okay. Um, lady. Obviously, the people that are, uh, you know, the woman that's with you has some sort of influence over her, um, or she wouldn't have arranged for this meeting. Right. Um, her advisor, more than likely, but they're pretty far away. Um, and then there are nearby cavaliers, essentially, that would be... It is almost as if they keep people a fair distance away from the queen, just in case. Uh -huh. they try to... Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. <laughs> um, either way, though, I can roll for the merfolk that are, uh, that are nearby, if you want me to sure. see how, see how they react. Sure. Um, let's see. <laughs> trying to find where these uh, mermaid stats went to alright so while I'm grabbing those um, yeah Pharos, uh your words are long uh, they take everyone on a journey um, go ahead and give me a persuasion check real quick All right, they have no bonuses to wisdom, so one, two, three, four, five. Wait, before, uh, can I use my one inspiration die that I have? Oh, to roll? I mean, yeah, uh, normally you do it beforehand, but oh. uh, it's cool. Um, as you uh, deliver these words, they, uh, all the merfolk sort of look to each other uh, and look to you, and they... Um, the queen nods and says, uh, yes, that is why you are here. Your people are in danger and my people are as well. Let us work together and perhaps we can survive what comes next. I will tell you all that I know in good faith that you will tell me all that you know. The Anguillians of the great deeps have risen after a long departure. Their reappearance was seen by the Sahaugan as a sign of great fortune and change. The Sahaugan, under the influence of these Anguillians, have put aside any sort of petty squabbles and banded together under a strong council of leadership. They have built for themselves a great fortress. There they house over 10,000 sea devils, which is another way of describing Zahaugan. Um They are led by a council of barons, baronesses, and priests. We believe that they intend, with the army that they have built, to ride the incoming tide of She Who Hungers Return 
and sweep across the coastline, savagely consuming and killing everything in their path. They have already, through their Malenti agents, uh, that is to say, Sahaugan, <clears throat> who are born mutated and with the appearance of sea elves, uh, undermined and broken the alliances of the sea elves, as I have already told you. Further, with the assistance of the Anguillians and their sea serpents, they have chased the Tritons from this world, and they have retreated to the Elemental Plane of Water. We are the last community of merfolk who remains in the Great Sea and who wish to stand against them, but there is little we could do against such great numbers. However, our scouts and druids have gathered a great deal of intelligence about the hierarchy of their leadership. We believe that if the leader of their war council can be defeated, it will cause the remaining leaders to fight with each other and hopefully break up the alliance. In their fortress, known as Talcrast, Baron uh, Xerxes watches over and commands his council of four great generals, Baroness Seklaz, Baron Kepmak, High Priestess Thadra, and Blade Master Makat. Baroness Seklaz was the one who organized the raids into the Lizard Folk territory. Uh, she was put in charge of retrieving the great weapon known as Surge. She was unsuccessful in this task, from what I understand. Baron Kepmak is the mated spouse of the Baroness, younger than her, uh, but incredibly uh, efficient. Uh, he is the one who has rallied uh, the many Sahaugan armies and communities under the banner of Baron uh, Xerxes. High Priestess Thadra is, some say, the Chosen of Sekula, the Shark Goddess. Now, our scouts and druids do say that there is some tension between High Priestess Thadra and the rest. She feels that their devotion to She Who Hungers in the Deep is a direct insult to Sekula, the Shark Goddess, and shows a deviation from the normal worship and the true calling of the Sahogan people. Finally, there is Blade Master Makat, a hulking brute, massive in size, and an expert with many arms and armor. He has trained his troops well, and through his strength and might, subjugated many sea creatures uh, and sea monsters under his command. Now again, all four answer to one creature, Baron Xerxes, who is said to be uh, a holy warrior of sorts. I believe your people would call him a paladin. He is possessed of sorcerous talents, multiple arms, and great size. I tell you these things plainly and clearly because I feel that without taking care of the Sahaugan threats, she who hungers will be 
far too powerful. The mortals of the sea and the land will be too busy fighting the Sahaugan for their lives to offer any aid or assistance in stopping She Who Hungers. If we wait too much longer, it will be too late. And then she sort of looks to you guys and says, What say you? What news do you bring to the surface? What is your reaction to these, this news, this information? Uh, certainly gives us great insight into the inner workings of the Sahaugan. Of the surface, the uh, dragon of the swamp, uh, known as Sinesis, has been uh, defeated. Would anyone else like to chime in on things that uh, would be pertinent for the queen to know? I like look to the group. It uh, it it rained a lot um, recently. It just keeps raining. It's very soggy and wet and kind of uh, honestly annoying. And it is very wet down here too. But yeah, this is this is more comfortable. I, I like I like your decorations. Um, I, I have I have simple question if it is okay to ask Queen. And I look. I mean, yeah. I mean, she she just stares at you with her okay. her big old her big old fish eyes because okay. she has okay. you know asked you guys for to to speak. Right. So you, uh, will, you shouldn't need, okay. shouldn't need to ask. All right, all right. It's it's, it's a Queen, so I want to be careful. But um, oh, for sure, for sure. <laughs> um, Remember, your guide told you you needed to be bold and confident without being too rude and impertinent. Yeah, I think we can. I think we can help you here. Um, I think we can deal with um, this threat you mentioned. Um, my simple question is: How do we find them? Where are they? I shall provide for you. Um, our greatest scouts um, and infiltrators, and they can show you the location. It is far from here by sea, but uh, were you to ride inside a great beast or upon one of your wooden ships, you could get there much quicker. Uh, we have wooden ship just up, up above, so we could do that, I think. Um, and I will turn back into my self well mm. into my sorry my human form um and oh my seal form is really cute though okay <laughs> um and i will say um your highness um we appreciate this trust of information I think we are all in agreement with you that the Sahaugan uh, pose uh, a great threat, and if we can so um, dissent among their ranks, then then that will serve us in the in the fight to come. Um, and should you need further evidence of uh, the side that we are on in this fight and our ability to accomplish uh, what? we set out to do um, uh, th this weapon of which you have spoken um, uh, we we were in fact instrumental in, in removing that from the grasp of the Baroness uh, so uh, yeah. four, four of the nearby cavaliers uh, begin to cheer as you <laughs> said the permission you're not sure why uh, these four <laughs> in particular are cheering for you <laughs> Um, but the <laughs> yeah the hundreds of merfolk watching from the coral reef gallery surrounding the throne room uh, begin to pick up the cheer as well. The queen listens to the cheers as they rise and fall, and nods her head. Okay, she says, uh, "Marina, sorry, Mariana, you have." Uh, been wise beyond your years and beyond your reputation. These truly are great champions of the surface world. 
please extend my thanks to the Sea Wolf for lending them to our cause. If you are able to break the leadership of the Sahaugan, I will pledge every last life in Tyria to protect the settlement of Salt Marsh from what is yet to come. If you are unsuccessful, we will be forced to leave the area. If it makes you feel better, we are only ever successful. So this this sounds like good good deal. Uh, she smiles and says, uh, "I adore such confidence." And she narrows her eyes a bit as she kind of takes in your uh, your measure. So. I just smile back. Are you some sort of Colinth? Who's she looking at? Uh, she is directing that directly at the bold and spicy Nikolai Constantine, third of his day of never fails, always succeeds. Hyperbolic deluxe looks great with his new haircut. Does Nikolai know what a Colinth is? Um. I kind of feel like most races in Fantasyland would probably be aware of their mermaid equivalent. So, yeah, I think you probably heard of them. Ah, uh, okay. He says, "Yeah, da, I am, I am not Colinth, but um, uh, uh, land version, sort of, but but smarter and, and better." Mm. There is a, a chuckle that goes up through the gallery because you know, you know how Colinth are. <laughs> um, all right. They seem pretty impressed with you guys uh, overall, especially the um, the confidence and the poise, and also the fact that you were instrumental in preventing that weapon from falling into the hands of the Sahaugan. Um, their offer uh, stands. If you are able to break the leadership of uh, the Sahaugan, they will pledge every last merfolk life in Tyria to defending salt marsh and fighting against the remaining Sahaugan and Anguillians. Uh, though the, the hope is that the Sahaugan will be too busy in fighting for leadership and power to um, be of much use. They do not go against the Sahaugan themselves. Uh, because it is essentially a hornet's nest with 10,000 Sahaugan in it, and they are several hundred merfolk. Um, so they, uh, they don't really want to get, you know, get wiped out. I think that it's, I think they're close to like a thousand merfolk total. So it's a pretty, this is all that's left. Everybody else has either been killed or chased off by the Sahaugan menace. Now the... Anguillians, which are the deep sea versions of the Sahaugan, uh, are in fact in limited numbers. Um, they do not they do not breed well. It's the general understanding that you got from your guide uh, on the way to this meeting. Um, and also, they have a practice where they let their young eat each other. So <laughs> out of a yeah, out of like a hundred eggs, only like a handful get to grow up because they're encouraged to like cannibalize each other. So it's it's a tough society. Like but the the Anguillians are considered by the Sahaugan in the same way that like the elves would hold the Eladrin, I guess you could say. Um, you know how the Eladrin are more supernatural, like plain touched versions of elves like that's kind of how the Sahaugan view the Anquilians. they are they are a higher form uh angels if you would mm. all right any any questions uh for her about this mission that you are accepting about what needs to be done i mean this is the time to get to get uh -huh. answers yeah. Any un underwater-related questions? Any campaign? Maybe there's some stuff you don't understand because you guys have been on the land and you don't know 100% what's going on in the water? This is the chance to learn all that information. 
yeah. Are there multiple um, entrances into place we will go? And if so, which one should we go into? Hmm. That is a great question. Um, they inform you that the the scouts that they have sent um, know of only one uh, one entrance. It is on the surface of the sea floor. The fortress itself goes under the sea floor. Now there could be additional entrances because tactically it wouldn't be very smart to only have one way in and out of their fortress. Um, especially since the Sahagan as a people do not uh, subscribe to arcane magic. Uh, only females are allowed to be priestesses, and um, the only the only Sahagans that have arcane magic are ones who uh, were born with it, aka sorcerers. Um, but they do not train academically to be wizards robes or anything like that, and they don't really value um, arcane music, so they don't have like uh, bards or anything like that. So chances are there are additional entrances. They have not uh, been able to find them yet. If there were, um, they would probably be accessible through nearby sea caves. Though the region is quite dangerous because all sharks, including the dreaded devil shark, um, are drawn to large concentrations of Sahagan who can Aquaman style control them. Uh, a devil shark, you are informed, is sort of like if a shark and a dragon were smashed together. So it's got a breath weapon, it's got fear, um, it, it hits really hard, it's very big. Um, yeah, all that jazz. They also have um, regular shark, every flavor of shark you could imagine, and then there's a special kind of domesticated shark they have uh, that they keep as like humans who keep dogs, called a shell shark, which is a shark that has like a bony, like a carapace growing out all over it. Yeah. Any other any other questions for them? Um, um, so they know 100% there's the one main entrance on the surface. There's many levels below ground. And if there is, and it makes sense that there would be, additional entrances, those would only be accessible through... Uh, would likely be accessible through nearby sea caves. Good chance that those sea caves would be guarded by something. All right, Ferris will like, pipe up. It's like, I believe... Uh couple moons ago I wronged a kraken in these parts and since I'm visiting the underwater I feel like I try to make peace with it if it's a if any it's other a, questions for the merfolk um I they <clears throat> who was the one um who thought that um it was profane to the goddess of the sharks to oh, worship. Oh, yeah, sure. I can give you a full uh, intel here on their uh, names and all that jazz. So, let me, I'll post them into Roll20 chat, I guess. So, uh, this guy is Big Boss, uh, Paladin, Sork, uh, Mega Boss, Deluxe, Royale. There we go with cheese with cheese mr squidward with <laughs> cheese um so that's the that's the big boy that the the other four answer to uh this is the one that was wait did you charge. intentionally just try type mega boss yeah yeah oh no no that would be bad <laughs> that would be bad <laughs> even yeah even too soon. yeah even baron xersus is a better better leader than uh yeah, so let's not go there. All right, so Baroness Seklaz is in charge of uh, the basically Eldric acquisitions uh, department. So uh, tracking down uh, spoop spoop powered stuff. That's what she's in charge of. So let me put her in there. And then her hubby, uh, Baron Kepmac, uh, he is the young gun. Um, recruiter he's like um i guess he's kind of like the tom hanks of like their people you know he's kind of small but he's super charismatic got a great smile a lot of a lot of rows of white teeth um 
you know, he uh, he goes to like other settlements and he does like the Jerry Maguire, like show me the money thing. Uh, and then like when he leaves, bam, they've got hundreds more uh, Sahaugan. So that's that's his claim to fame. Uh, then there is uh, High Priestess uh, Thadra. Uh, she is the old school uh, religious leader. Uh, favored of Sekula, who is the shark god. She's the one that's not happy with the direction things are going. And then there's just Blade Master uh, Makat. Basically, if these five were playing Dungeons and Dragons, uh, Blade Master Makat is the guy that's like, Can I just play Champion Fighter? I just want to hit shit. Um, so that's Blade Master Makat. Just there to hit shit. But they are kind of a dream team. They're the dream team of, of the Sahaugan. So they are the ones that uh, have been leading them uh, to greatness over these last uh, couple years in preparation for this. And Thadra, are, are there those who um, side with Thadra or might be convinced uh swayed mm -hmm. um listening to your question uh you receive and i'm kind of parsing together like the queen's dialogue with mariana's with like the advisor with like uh, this lady right here just kind of um condensing it for you but essentially yes um the sahaugan love sekola they love her um and essentially the the return of this uh, of these Anguillians kind of threw their religious practice for a loop because you know it was one of those things that you whispered about like oh the Anguillians of the deep our ancestors blah 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 but you don't actually expect them to just show up one day uh, kind of deal so the Sahaugan uh, were very happy with raiding eating having slaves watch the slaves fight each other in, the, in their gladiatorial arenas, uh, that kind of thing, um, just live their best life. They feel, some of them, that this is maybe overreaching. Uh, also, um, they know that Kraken, in general, are dangerous and uh, try not to be indebted to Kraken. And at the end of the day, she who hungers in the deep, some of them think she's just one big old Kraken. So, um, why would they, you know, why would they give up what they had for such an overly ambitious thing? Um, so there's definitely some d dissension, um, in the ranks though, this is a lawful evil society. That's a lot of like, go along to get along. Cause you don't want to be served up as dinner. Yeah. Um, so sorry just to recap most of them or some of them at least um sort of like things the way they were before and oh for think sure the yeah Angolians are are sort of uh asking a bit much from them and maybe changing their society more than they want it changed and they don't want to be um indebted to a kraken uh um, right yeah right now they're not they're... sure that she who yeah yeah, they're caught. They're caught up in the sensationalism of like we can do this. We can conquer the shoreline. We can we can flood the coast. Uh, you know, we'll work with our our betters, the Anguillians and their uh, their progenitor, uh, She Hungers of the Deep, and you know we'll usher in a new age of like dominion over the seas and blah blah blah. And you know the the first initial victory against the Tritons definitely like bolstered their morale, and then their um, propaganda campaign against the sea elves was a huge success so they're riding high on a chain of successes uh the only real failure they've had is they were unable to acquire um the weapon surge which does put baroness seklas at the bottom of the pecking order she is definitely viewed as the least uh capable and powerful uh, amongst their council Uh, okay, thank you. Um, thank you so much. 
Mm. Uh, uh, and just, uh, do you know anything of, of the sort of intra-party uh, tensions? Uh, does anyone else hanker after the Baroness, or, or her Baron for that matter? Are there any uh, wedges that could be driven among the, the favors that they hold? <laughs> Well, as, as selfish, uh, self-serving creatures, um, but also, law, you know, creatures that respect law and order, um, they, uh, more, more likely, the Baroness Seklaz is looking for a way to knock one of the other generals down a notch, or down a peg, so that the focus on her failures are no longer, um, pro you know, predominant. Uh, these are these are creatures that work together, but ultimately, it's a cooperative game, but it's a competitive game. Like there will be a winner, you know what I mean? And like, even though they're all working together, they want to be the one who is the best, the strongest, the most influential, the most powerful. Um, again, this is a culture where they literally eat each other um, if they show too much weakness. Uh, so that mindset could be used uh, against them. The the problem is they are a very xenophobic race. Like they they know that everyone hates them because they are they are mean and nasty and cruel. Um, so it's not like it would be very difficult to just roll up on them and be like, "Yo, what's up?" Um, unless you had a very convincing story for doing so. Um, cause outside of the Anguillians, they, they really don't, they really don't outsource to other, uh, species, but they do have heck amounts of slaves. Uh, they are way into slaves. They have actually developed, um, potions that allow surface dwellers to survive in the depths of the ocean, uh, and essentially force feed the prisoners, these potions so that they can use them in their underwater cities and, um, you know, building projects and, and things like that. Ooh, uh, um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, um, uh, 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 Queen, um, we have powerful spells to keep us alive down here, as you can see, but if we could save those, so to speak, uh, do you have potions that could um, allow us to survive down here? Uh, she nods slowly and says, um, I will see if our treasury holds any such items that were taken from the Sahaugan. We don't make a practice of welcoming outsiders. Uh, and we do not make a practice of owning slaves. So we've never had the need or occasion for such oddities. Yeah, Nikolai understands. Just likes to save uh, powerful spells for killing bad guys, if you see what I'm saying. Oh, she sees what you're saying. She sees what you're saying. Okay. Alright, so they will they will check that. Anything else? Oh, uh, Crash, I don't know if you heard me earlier, but, uh, so, uh, I was asking, like, I, I wronged the no? Kraken a, a little while ago. Just wondering if it's possible, like, oh, peace I could with it, kind of hear, cool? like, Cadenex. I'm not sure. Cadenex, are you talking? Hello. Talking, yeah. yeah I mean, okay. Now I can hear you. You sounded like a hundred miles away again. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, so I was saying I, uh, I wronged the Kraken a little while ago, and I was wondering if it's possible, like, make peace with it, or if it's around, or if it's, if it's still maniacally once in my head. They all look very confused by the statement. Uh, and they're like finally they kind of get their bearings for the conversation they're not sure if this is a like a diplomatic tactic to kind of throw them all off their groove um, but the queen kind of motions to her vizier who's getting ready to have you executed and she's like there are a few kraken in the great sea two of which Wield immense power. I can't imagine that you'd want their favor unless you were crazy. Uh, well, I don't mean to cross paths with it again. I just didn't know if it's like still within these waters. 
Well, it's not within these waters, but um, there is one far to the north, uh, and there is one much further south. Uh, those are the two you would most need to worry about. Though I don't believe the mission we're sending you on would take you anywhere near either of those beasts. Thanks for letting me know. But if you have wronged such a creature, it will never forget. <laughs> oh, I if just like kind of water. I... You'd have like the large sweat drop on his. <laughs> so yeah, like I, a I, sweat I... bubble just kind of like forms and like floats away from your mm -hmm. forehead. Okay. I I just kind of slap him on the back and smile at him. <laughs> I think it will be okay. But if not, you will just uh, die quickly. It's all good. way of life well that's all well does anyone else need anything or um might we be able to meet Rocco <laughs> uh the queen smiles and nods at your uh strange land whale and uh <laughs> agrees and uh everyone watches uh as the creatures frolic and play in the water <laughs> it is like watching a toy, yeah, like a toy um, dog, or, or like the smallest possible toy dog, like a toy chihuahua, uh, and like a, a freaking Newfoundland, uh, like play together. Uh, it, it is nerve wracking, uh, but they seem to have a good time. And that kind of, uh, you know, watching your kids play soccer together kind of deal. <laughs> uh, you do, you do kind of feel like a lot of the tension starts to, uh, ease up a little bit. So, uh, there is some sort of happy, uh, applause and, uh, singing from the, uh, community as they watch these two beautiful creatures, uh, engage in play. Illyria is too happy to say anything. She's just watching. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, the queen, uh, watching you watch uh, the the creatures play together, uh, says, um, "This is a curious beast. Where does it originate from?" That and I. She, she motions to Spencer don't exactly know he was he managed to escape from his captor and uh, mm. found his way to me I'm hoping one day I'll be able to learn more about his origin interesting uh, well this uh, is my son uh, she says motioning to, to Rocco he died in the service of our people, and the spirits of the sea that we give worship and tribute to felt his death heroic enough to reincarnate him. Uh, he now serves as uh, a guardian of our community. What a minute, an amazing sacrifice your son gave. I'm sure he's going to be a wonderful guardian for you guys. And for the rest of us as well. You see a lot of the merfolk watching the queen to see if she portrays any sort of weakness. Uh, remembering the sad loss and change of her son, she does not give away anything. All right. Um, they believe that the best thing for this mission, because uh, Dungeons and Dragons, is to send a small elite team uh, to handle this problem. Uh, so you will be uh, given Mariana and uh, essentially Mariana's adventuring party, like you know, from the from 
ghosts of salt marsh jupiter or whatever um wherein everybody oh man i should have gone with neptune that would have been better um I, I, think, yeah. I, I honestly think we should be six people and we should be seal team six I, oh I that would be why. pretty good yeah I don't, I don't know where this comes from just make you uh, get up on the side they definitely believe strongly in the power of SEAL Team 6, uh, especially when it comes to not pissing off 10,000 Sahaugan. So they, they basically don't want to give the Sahaugan the, the idea that they are like, yeah, boy, let's go to war. Um, but they do want to get in there and mess them up. Uh, to that end, uh, you will be bolstered by uh, a druid, uh, several rogues, and Mariana if you want their assistance. It is completely up to you. Uh, either way, they will travel with you to show you the location of the place. Mariana is intensely curious what your plan is uh, because she is fascinated by your alien minds and your alien way of doing things. I mean, I feel like we should, if the DM's gonna... Uh, uh, Nikolai not metagaming seems mm -hmm. like if there are 10,000 Sahagan, maybe we bring friends? Uh, you know, the more the merrier is always great. <laughs> okay. Alright. Um, if you are done, you know, with with the public diplomacy, uh, Mariana will take you to a beautiful undersea tavern that your lazy, no good dungeon master couldn't find an undersea tavern map for, believe it or not. Uh, so we're gonna have to use our imaginations. I picture it kind of like the ice cream parlor from the SpongeBob movie. I don't know. That's <laughs> that's, that's all my knowledge of the underwater realm is pretty much Bikini Bottom. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. Uh, or the Disney My Little or yeah, Little Mermaid cartoon. But they never really kind of got into the setting of that. You know, there was a lot of undeveloped lore we could have gotten from the uh, Disney Afternoons My Little. Uh, I keep calling him My Little Mermaid, My Little Pony. Yeah, anyways, <laughs> I don't have a tavern map, but she'll take you to the tavern that she likes to frequent, if you are so inclined. Sure. Okay. All right. So, uh, we'll stay on the same map, but, you know, in roll 20. But you guys eventually leave. You head out of the palace and into the community at large. You are definitely viewed as oddities. Uh, you are feared. Uh, but also um, uh, a curiosity. Uh, there is certainly a mixed bag of emotions when people uh, see you. Uh, this is definitely a community that is not in the habit of bringing in non-merfolk. Uh, however, the tavern that she takes you to is located near their sort of agora, their like marketplace kind of thing. So you do see a handful of other undersea races. Uh, some disenfranchised sea elves, uh, some of the aforementioned uh, Koalinth, uh, that sort of thing. Um, but again, for the most part, uh, it, it's feeling very ghost town because a lot of the other undersea communities have already either been destroyed, enslaved, or driven off. All right. Um, so she uh, she gets you guys a you know, a nice big uh, table at the Drunken Clam and uh, orders you guys some delicious uh, seafood because that's all they serve. And they do, um, in order to become intoxicated, have fermented uh, eggs from massive fish. Uh, and you just pretty much eat the roe or you puncture the roe uh, with your mouth and then like drink it out of the egg. You drink like the embryonic fluids or whatever. It's a whole mm. thing. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of research on how mermaids get intoxicated. So, um, yeah. So if you uh, want to partake of the food and drink and hospitality of the merfolk people, uh, that is the thing you can do. She secures rooms for you should you decide to stay overnight, but understands if you would prefer returning to the surface world. Uh, she would, you know, she'll go with you guys when you guys are ready to leave. But if you want to discuss some plans here... While they still have access to um, merfolk uh, technology and knowledge, as it were, uh, that works too. Hmm. Mm. 
I'm really distracted because I'm just looking for undersea taverns at this point, so you guys should go ahead. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um, and I will... Um, how, how big are the eggs, Crash? Uh, they're about the size of a grapefruit. Oh, um... Yeah. Miss Queen, can I have can I have two eggs, please? Okay. Well, the Queen totally did go to the drunken clab with you, <laughs> uh, but but Mar Mariotta did. Oh, she'll sorry, de yeah, sorry. De yeah, she'll definitely get you whatever you're you're after. So yeah, she he, she, he, uh, he, he had you two of them. Pre he was pre gaming. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah, he'll 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 um crack open one. Okay, um, it is uh very sweet. Uh, and you do, in fact, detect uh, alcohol. Um, that's definitely happening. Yeah, thank you, Miss Mariana. This is very uh, tasty. Um, mm -hmm. All right, but we have, I guess, bigger things to do other than just get intoxicated on eggs. Fair, fair. Okay. So, um, yeah, she says uh, our druid is incredibly skilled, um, has access to uh, pretty decent circles of magic, uh, able to uh, wild shape to a number of aquatic forms and a few flying forms as well. Uh, and then her team, they specialize in poison and infiltration. Uh, the Sahaugan are not immune to poison. So they they could be quite effective against them if needed, and they do eventually uh, come back with information that uh, they do have uh, a dozen of the uh, the strange Tide Pod esque um, potions because all the underwater potions are basically in like Tide Pod form. Uh, because making glass is kind of hard underwater. Um, so they bring you those, and they are full of the absolutely foul poison that the Sahaugan feed to their slaves, which uh, forces the imbiber to become uh, like deep sea aquatic. Which means while you're under the effects of it, you do not want to go above. The, the, the sea because you'll get all dried up and not be able to breathe and stuff. It essentially shifts your metabolism to be aquatic instead of layering it on top. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Well, uh, two per PC, maybe? I don't know. Hmm. Sounds good. And this is apparently created um, by Sahaugan using a mixture of special sea kelp that they grow themselves uh, and a number of alchemical practices involving uh, the combination of different types of blood. All right. Well, that's terrifying. Dinner is yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the food is good. Yeah, the food is good. There are a number of merfolk who have Aquaman esque abilities, and they'll just kind of go out and be like, hey, fish, get in the net. And that's pretty much all <laughs> they have to do. So, I mean, it's not the most ethical use of, uh, of, mermaid, of a, uh, Aquaman powers, but there it is. Um, yeah, it is handy. It's handy. I guess it's like the equivalent of yelling like "sui" to get the pigs to come to slaughter. <laughs> They're just gonna go out there, and just yell at the fish. Um, so, hmm. All right then. What? What now? Please, I I need input from you. I don't want to throw you against ten thousand Sahaugan and be like, "Why did this work out?" <laughs> you know what I mean? I know it's a lot to take in. Um, it, you, but you have kind of told them that you would you would take care of it. I understand if you just want to go back to your ship and not do it. Uh, it's Dungeons and Dragons. I'll support your decision. Um, we call, but we call a champion out. We say like, <gasps> on their honor, we'll be like one v one somebody. And, and, oh. uh, I feel like sense. you've suggested that a number of times. Yeah. Is that yeah? 
Um, all right. So as you propose this plan, the merfolk listed in. There are a number of holes in the pl- uh, on the, in the plan. Okay. Uh, the first is the Sahaugan consider themselves to, the the world is made of two different types of people: uh, he who eats, and it that is eaten. Uh, they would only rise to such a challenge uh, if it was issued by another he who eats. Um, you would not essentially fight a hamburger. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. right. So, unless you were a Sahaugan, they would not feel the need to honor such a ridiculous uh, thing because, like, you you don't you don't matter. You don't have any. You don't. You're not even on the radar. You know what I'm saying? Uh, culturally. Um, but if you were a Sahaugan, uh, especially a Sahaugan of note, a rival, as it were, uh, they yeah, they definitely would rise to the challenge because uh, they'd have to put you put you in your place and defend the strength that they represent. You could wager the, the trident on it. Uh, look at the Thagrim. Oh, shit. When you say that, the merfolk all kind of stir. And Mariana's like, wait, you still have the trident? He crosses his arms and like nods. Like, mm-hmm. Thagrim. Oh, like, look to Thagrim expectantly. Well, I mean, Baron Xerxes, that's, that's what he has been after. Like, he, he wanted to have that to lead his armies against, uh, the the surface like if you if you could make it known that there was a chance that he could get that oh that would be a powerful temptation uh, I'll look to everybody else be like does that sound like a good plan to, like we put out that the surge is up for grabs if they accept the challenge I mean, yeah yeah I mean, that sounds hype. Who's gonna 1v1? <laughs> I mean, who says we have to 1v1 him fairly? I mean... Now, this guy, the the druid that, uh, that rolled up on this biz, uh, he's like, this is a dangerous endeavor. If we fail, we hand a powerful weapon over to the enemy. Whatever you think you know of this weapon... You do not even begin to understand the true power such a weapon has beneath the waves and in the hands of its intended wielders. Uh, so can you can you tell us more about that? That seems relevant to discussion. Okay. Uh, he introduces himself to you as Morvan and uh, explains that um, this weapon is essentially... Uh, a conduit of she who hungers power. Everything killed by it sends power to her, and then when necessary, she can channel power through it to make her champion uh, all but indestructible. Oh, that's what it does. (laughs) And, you know, legends say that it has a number of, uh, you know, parlor tricks that it could perform, like summoning elementals and turning you into water and things like that, but nothing compared to, like, the power that a champion of She Who Hungers would have wielding it in her service. Huh. They would want that. Oh, they'd want it bad. They'd want it real bad. Uh, do you just need to hold it to be in her service, or can she make you be in her service? Um, I, I guess I'm confused how you get to be in her service. The druid cut Daros' fishy eyeballs at you, and he says, you know, like, like a warlock or a cleric, you know, you dedicate yourself to her mind, body, and soul. Yeah, Nikolai nods. That makes sense. Yeah. I feel like it's kind of the same, but different. And he's going to eyeball <laughs> Barrow. <laughs> 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 
Well, generally, if uh, a mortal serves a more powerful being, then if they're doing a good job, that powerful being will often give them uh, access to more powerful abilities and uh, teach them things beyond the normal uh, realm of information. Why, I have learned much from the spirits of the sea, whom I have dedicated my life to. I don't think I want them to know we have it. I mean, it's, it's just a bargaining chip. What else are you using it for? If they want it, we got it. We don't lose, so... Well, I don't plan on losing. Paris is very uh, confident like that. I don't know where his confidence comes from, but... Maybe okay. we, maybe we, um, I don't know. Maybe we tell them about it to surprise them at last minute, and then we kill and we knock their heads off. Well, this guy Dune, who's apparently like Merfolk Spec Ops, uh, he's been listening intently, and he puts forward, um, if they find out that you have this weapon, they will do anything and everything they can to take it from you. It is the ultimate bait, but you are baiting a great number of hungry sharks. Be prepared to deal with the consequences of this revelation, or you're simply chumming a massive school of hungry predators. Hmm. That seems not ideal, maybe. What do you, what do you all think? Yeah, plus we don't have a way of getting it out without ruining Thorgrim's pants. Yeah, yeah, I'm not opening my pants right now under the water. It's not a really great idea. <laughs> Mariana takes the bait and she's like, wait, it's in your pants? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sure is. She kind of looks confused. I heard from the stories it was very long. Looking at you, there's no way it could be in your pants. Thogram's look at how like, look at how small and and short your legs are. Yeah, it it fits. You know, I hide it well. It's bigger on the inside. Yeah, oh. it's it's way bigger. Whoa, on the wait, inside. It's inside. <laughs> oh, oh, are you? Are you... Nikolai, Nikolai blushes. She, a bit. she, yeah, she blushes and looks at Nikolai and she says, "And Nikolai Constantine, third of his name, is it in his asshole?" <laughs> um, Nikolai will just w wink at her, I think. Don't be question. foolish. It's obviously collapsible. It's probably the size of a dagger right now. Hmm. Nikolai winks at him, too. Okay, and then they both look kind of frustrated. Well, which is it? Is it collapsible or is it in his own? I don't think... <laughs> I don't think both are what they call mutually exclusive. Um... And then oh, like, they both yeah. nod. Mm. And then Morvan says, Ah, it is just like the pirates I'm always telling you about. And they all look sagely at each other, like, We understand outer space. Yeah, we read all of Uncle Traveling Matt's <laughs> uh, postcards. We know what outer space is about. So. <sighs> all right. Well, they think thus far the best plan that you've had though it is also the riskiest plan is to use surge as bait that's the general murfo consensus they they were they thought that if you were integ you know integral in preventing them from getting the weapon they thought maybe you had it destroyed or hidden or something but the, when they find out you've got it in your freaking pants uh they're just like what it's like yeah Oh, well, what if we told them it would be somewhere, and we lured them to that location? Ah, more of a like, like, yeah, he's like, like we spread rumors that it yeah. was being taken by ship, and then yeah. they would uh, they would attack the ship. Yeah, and then we ambush them. Ah. Oh. 
how do we feel about losing ship is and, and then i guess um nikolai will look to skull because i feel like skull's been kind of and, and dogram like the curators yeah. of the ship i mean we don't have to lose the ship we can just spread rumors at there's a is there like an island anywhere around here that's uh, uh we could say we're burying it maybe oh uh-huh i like that <laughs> There oh. is an old abandoned fortress not far from their fortress. It's um the top of one of the most massive mountains in the Great Sea, um, so high that the tip of the mountain juts above the surface of the water. Um, there, um, surface dwellers built a fort, but they're always killing each other over it. I think right now, um, no one currently has control of it. Or if they did, I'm sure you'd be strong enough to take the fortress. So what about that? We, I'll make a lead box that looks like it would house Surge. Mm. Um, and we make way for that location, like we're planning on burying said box there. And then we ambush them. Champions wouldn't have any reason to go. They just send their lackeys, right? They, we want the generals. So how do we lose I mean, them? They, well, they, they sent they sent their lackeys last time, and you um, defeated them. I doubt that they would risk such a foolish endeavor again, especially if rumor spread that it was the same individuals who had bested their people before. Also, keep in mind that at this point, the Baron uh, would do anything to have the weapon for himself, and I'm sure his subordinates would want the weapon for themselves. What better oh. way to steal the mantle of power away from him than to be invincible? Yeah, th this this will be fun, y'all. I think. Um, although, um, uh, Thagram, we're, we're, are we still in the pub? I think, right? Oh, well, you're the you're the the Tyrian uh, tavern, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, when when Thogrim suggests that idea, Nikolai will um, raise egg and attempt to crack his egg against Thogrim's egg and then drink it. It makes a little squishy sound, like you know, anytime Spencer interacts with something, just kind of a squeaky <laughs> toy noise. Okay. Uh, and so it's, this seems like this seems re like reasonable idea. We will, some of us might die, but it will be interesting nonetheless. Yeah, I mean they they think it's a great idea. So they want to know if the rumors that need to be spread should. Uh, should they wait until you have set up on the island? Uh, if they spread rumors too quickly, you may be waylaid on your way to the island. Yeah, it'd be better if maybe they caught us on the island and then okay. not. Ooh, yeah, maybe maybe our uh, ship crashed and we have been stuck there for, I don't know, seven days. Mm, okay. We need, okay. We need. We need. We need help. Oh, that makes you sound super vulnerable. All right. Um. Hmm. It's a simple enough thing. Is there anyone, Morvan, who is willing to die to deliver this information? Uh, and Morvan looks very serious and says, "Always, always." Uh, so what they're going to do is they're going to have like a uh, important looking messenger um, go through Sahawagan controlled territory and essentially get captured. Uh, terrible, terrible fate for them. Uh, they'll give them like a little poison capsule so they could kill themselves so that they don't have to live a life of horrible slavery and possibly being eaten alive. Um, but the information that they'll be carrying will indicate the merfolk's great interest and last chance to save themselves if they could acquire uh, the trident from these surface dwellers. The surface dwellers are 
fools and uh, manage to wreck their ship upon the nearby rocks uh, and will be easy prey. <laughs> mm. All right. You guys, any, any suggestions to them for their part of the plan? No, sounds pretty good. Okay. Uh, fair enough. Uh, a word on the Sahaugan turn you into an aquatic creature um, tide pods. They do need to be stored in wa uh, in water. So make sure that you don't uh, let them dry out. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. If that's the case, I can take you guys back to your ship where you guys could finalize your plans while I uh, grab the map for Island Fortress. Uh, so let's see take you up to your ship there we go turn off the spooky underwater music here we go all right cool all right i'm gonna mute for a sec while i uh quietly custom myself trying to remember where in my 50 different roll 20s i have this uh this island hold on But totally feel free to roleplay amongst yourselves and plan and stuff. Oh, okay. So when we get there, on the way there or whatever, I'll, uh, I'll make separate a separate box, box uh, that looks like something we might store or fill in. And then we oh, can yeah. um, maybe we set up a... plan on taking it out, do we? Or... No, 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 no. God, no. no, no. God, no. Gond no. Uh, can you make a replica? <laughs> Thanks, Alira. <laughs> I think... Well, we don't need to make a replica surge. They're going to know it's not surge when it's not talking to them. So oh, we yeah, just. But, like, have it out, kind of like, oh, look, look what we got. Look what we got. Well, no, no, no. We just, we just have the box. Oh. And they, they should be able to put two and two together that uh, the box is probably housing surge. And maybe we hide while our, our, uh, our some of our, our minions, if you will, uh, pretend to be burying it slash guarding it, you know? Maybe make like a fake excavation site or something. And then we set up traps. I like it. And then like, Illyria like Set up traps them. like the, the famous kobold, uh, Macaulay kobold? Yeah. Is that, yeah, <laughs> yeah uh-huh. Okay. All right. I has located the map. Uh, let me yeah, make some brief adjustments here. And then I'll set you guys loose on it so that you can uh, you can go hog wild and Macaulay Culkin in this, this shit. This is a very good idea. I don't, I don't always say that to players, but I feel like I can't not say it. This is a very good idea. Um, well done. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, we'll assume that time to draft the letter, get a volunteer to kill themselves and deliver the letter, um, <laughs> process the letter. Hey, it's just how it goes. It's just how it goes, people. Uh, it has to be convincing. Um, they wouldn't believe it if it showed up with like a basket of like nigiri. You know what I mean? Like they're gonna. Um, all right. Sagram. So uh, yeah. <laughs> Thogram would like to meet the person who's gonna risk their life. Oh, if, okay. if possible. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, and Atari also. And then, basically, basically, how how many days does it take to get there? Uh, the island is actually not too far away. Only about uh, only about a day of sailing, really, from where you currently are. So that works out pretty well. So that'll give you probably a whole day um to prepare um 
possibly two days. Can I? I would. I want to spend like one of those days. I'd like to use divine intervention. Okay. And try to um, basically uh, bring that guy back to life, if possible. Oh dang! Okay. Uh, well, the individual who has volunteered to die is a mermaid by the name of Tyne. Uh, and she, uh, she's willing to do anything to stop the Sahaugan, um, even, uh, lose her own life. So she is, uh, she is pleased to meet you guys and thankful for this opportunity. Uh, perhaps... It, she dies in a manner um, similar to the uh, to the prince. She will be reincarnated as a great guardian of Tyria. Mm. Yeah, these people have a, definitely a different different way of looking at things uh, than you guys do. Uh, if you like, I can just put her up in the corner here so you can always remember her sacrifice. There she is. All right, so uh, this old fort, this old fort is beat to shit. Um, blood stains everywhere, cannon damage everywhere. Um, most of the, most of the cannons uh, are completely inoperable uh, due to neglect or damage. The rest have been stolen, uh, or um, you know, that's pretty much the only two options. Uh, you could spend time to repair them and get them functioning, uh, which would be pretty awesome. Uh, you could also realize that fiscally, uh, you hit the jackpot because you could definitely like uh, fix these cannons and put them on your ship. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> though they, <laughs> or sell them on the black market uh, po post campaign and retire richer than you already are. Um, as it as it is, uh, that does not change how illegal uh, they are in the Sword Coast. And if the Wizrobe Cleric Union found out, uh, it'd be a lot of time in Water Deep Prison. That's for sure. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Oh, we don't need double stairs here. Let me fix that real quick. Uh, boop. There we go. All right. So, uh, yeah, it is essentially like, uh, like they described to you there, you know, there are mountains underwater and this mountain goes all the way up like this. And the, the top of the ocean is like, whoops, uh, the top of the ocean is literally right there. You're just the tip of this massive mountain, which apparently is how islands work. They don't just float around in the ocean. I don't know. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Weird. Yeah, right? I thought they were all turtles. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Ugh, I was just trying to delete the, the writing. Okay. Um, so, you guys, there should be some dynamic lighting on the interior section. I'll remove the doors so that you can go wherever you please. Um, drag your minis out if you'd like to explore more and set up. Feel free to draw all over this bad boy. Um, and uh, Macaulay Kobold the hell out of it if that is what you are so inclined to do. Hmm. And Thogram, were you going to try and bring her back or, or later? I think after she's good and completed her mission, like if she she's given enough time. Um, got it, got it. Yeah, it'd yeah, be suspicious that... if they were eating her and then she just disappeared off the you know the cafeteria line kind of deal. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like this. I like this map because two of my favorite map makers teamed up to make it, which you could probably tell because it has two different art styles. But I still, still thought it was kind of nice. You know, it's like the power of friendship kind of map. And so Crash, and I agree, the map's pretty awesome. Uh, by the way, mm -hmm. um, so the right map that's the higher. Portion yep, that's the that's the roof. Yep, it's a it's a single story, squat little stone fort. Yep, uh, it has a storied history of pirates and mercenaries uh, and adventurers uh, just trading trading turns, killing each other um, for ownership of it. Uh, fortunately, you guys have run into it uh, in a uh, unoccupied state. 
Uh, though I'm sure after dark, uh, innumerable ghosties will rise up and uh, <laughs> try, try to spook you guys, because it is still Dungeons & Dragons. So Crashed. Where do we want Oh, um, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, go, go I was going to say, there's three different uphills, it looks like. Uh, yeah, let me grab some elevation markers real quick. Wait, who has a wall of light? We can all make a wall of light prison when they come ashore. I have wall of force, but not wall of light, unfortunately. I have wall of wind and wall of, oh, wall of fire, fire, but not which one let's see place. what would be the best way we'll, we'll go with elevation downs there we go mm -hmm. oh crash just since he made a, re a reappearance last time um can i get buddy uh yeah, yeah. Uh, i'm looking for see. him i didn't see him i could i'm sure i missed him uh, okay let's no. see. oh <laughs> There we go. That's the guy I love. Where's oh, go? There we go. Sailor Buddy. Uh, let's see. All right, should be able to control him now. All right, yes. Yeah, so let me uh, put down some of these elevation changes real quick. Oh, log trap. This looks great for a log trap. Like you roll the logs down the hill. Yeah, I can't stress enough how decrepit it is. Like, this poor fort, everybody's so busy fighting over it, you would assume it's like a, a PvP map from an MMO. Like, it's seen so many battles. But yeah, from like the like the log traps from like Swiss Family Robinson. Oh, are there tigers on this island that we can put into like pits? <laughs> um, well, there's a guy that likes cat dudes um but there's <laughs> no of, yeah kind of different yeah yeah, yeah kind of different uh we make like team rocket so style pit traps these are these are little passes like right here with the team rocket disguise. uh yep yep those are those are little passes those would be great places for bombs tra uh pits traps that kind of thing crash i can't see tari I don't. Maybe I'm just oh. missing them. Uh, let's see. Uh, or yeah, or skull. Their skull. Oh yeah. Uh, it was one of those like. Okay. Drag yeah. drag yourself out wherever you want to go, so that you could have two copies of yourself. Essentially, you could have your I'm on the roof and I'm inside the buildings. Uh, copies if you want. This is my feeble attempt, I guess, at having um layers uh in roll twenty. So, all right. I think that covers all the elevations. Is that does that explain it a bit more? Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, that, yeah. that's that's perfect. Yeah, okay. looks good. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll at least Nikolai will look to Thagram and be like, "So, um, I hear dwarves are good at uh, engineering. What what do you suggest?" So Thagram's got his head down. And he's just walking around, like making note of every like elevation change and. Um, the cliff faces are, are any of these cliff faces. Oh, also, like you're the letter that they're going to discover does claim that you guys uh wrecked your ship. Are you actually going to wreck your ship or are you going to landlock your ship? Like, what is the can is we, there going to be any any sort of theater for that or can we use some of the um little boats to the northeast on the lower uh, map to make it look like we wrecked a ship? I, you, yeah, I mean, you could certainly try. Absolutely. Right. I'm just reminding you of the narrative that the you told the merfolk that they're selling to the Sahagan. Yeah, I think yeah. we wreck many of these little ships, and we try and make it look like big shipwreck. Or, okay. I mean, we can just uh, beach, maybe beach the ship uh, somewhere over here, and then we can, uh, you know, when it's time, we can just get it... Um, Maybe back oh, yeah, the you, water. you can control water and all that good stuff, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let me see. I could just go grab your ship real quick. Mm -hmm. Maybe use it to block off uh, 
an area or something that's advantageous for us. I, I, knew, I knew dwarves were good at these kinds of things. Yes, yes. It's like um, he's got uh, military training or something. It's are weird. there... Crash, are there pirate hats flying around? Uh, ghost pirate hats. Each hat is haunted by its own ghost. Uh, but yes, definitely. Um, I'm going to strap one on Kat Yaru. Okay. Oh. It is the least terrible thing that's happened to Kat Yaru in a long <laughs> yeah. time. So they are down for it. They're down for uh -huh. it. Yeah, and he, it, I give him like 10 cigarettes. Okay, yeah. He'll do anything for 10 cigarettes. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Uh, you got it for both maps. Is it is that the same size? Uh, I'm pretty sure. I thought it was uh, your ship was 25 feet across. I'll go double check. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you got the you got a cute little sloop. So let's see. Um, the fattest it gets is one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so it's six uh, six squares apart. So it might be a little smaller than it's supposed to be. Let me scale it up for you real quick. Best way for me to check would be to take it to the map layer. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so it's got to be a little bit bigger. Uh... Alright, there you go. I'll take it back to the uh, token layer. You can move it around as you see fit. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's weird, right? Like, it feels... I guess it kind of feels bigger when you're on it, but then when it's... It like, seems uh, like massive. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. It, it, it just yeah. compared to like the the land, it just seems big. Like it's. Oh no! I mean, that's it's yeah, it's thirty feet across. So. No, yeah, I got you. Huh. Yeah, this is just an adorably small little fort. No, I promise, it's way bigger in person. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe we sail it around down here and block off, uh, uh this side. And just kind of beach it across. Sure. I mean, Nikolai's like more or less like yeah. nodding at everything Thagrim says at this point, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, before you guys parted company, uh, Mariana asked if you needed a crash course in um, Sahaugan, uh, or if you were well versed in their tactics and abilities. Uh, crash course would be good. Okay. Uh, they don't have to, but they prefer to fight at night. Uh, anyone missing any hit points, they have advantage on attacks against them. Uh, they can Aquaman um, any sharks or shark-like creatures uh, and often bring them with them. Sadly, they have not discovered any sharks similar to um, Spencer, because that would be dope. Um, if they had some shark hounds uh, that they could bring on land with them. Um, they are cunning uh, tacticians. Uh, their only downside is they don't have very good armor crafting skills, and it's very hard to find slaves who will make them armor. So defensively, uh, they they ain't great. Um, the higher ranking people generally have like metal breastplates or something cool like that that they stole or had slaves make or repurpose for them. Um, but their rank and file rely on their natural skills, so they do have a relatively low armor class, all things considered. Um, that being said, uh, they can be particularly dangerous uh, if you are playing in a game with uh, extreme critical hits, because the ability to essentially roll advantage on every attack. Uh, will inevitably lead to some pretty nasty critical hits. Uh, otherwise, the, the rank and file at your guys' level shouldn't be too bad as long as they don't swarm you. Um, what else? Are, uh, are they known to climb? Uh, they can, they can climb pretty good. Uh, they like to climb onto ships to kill people. They also, um, more than likely, will be bolstered by clerics and divine spellcasters. So we basically... 
exactly like have our... if you've managed to lure in the big shot uh it's gonna be it's gonna be like a battle royale of like powerful saugans mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, so we have the entire crew right with us uh yeah i'm assuming how many people is that again Oh uh, gosh, I think you have over 20 crew at this point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And do we do we have enough range weapons to facilitate giving them all one? Well, I mean they all have their per like their personal firearms, you know what I'm saying? Like Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. They they're proud they're proud NRA members like they don't care that it's <laughs> illegal they they you not you gotta take their flintlock pistol out of their cold dead hands. <laughs> Fay rune, Fay rune. They just start chanting at the <laughs> idea that someone might take their guns away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what happens when you hire people out of Salt Marsh. I would tell you. <laughs> so. I think I got the plan. Mm -hmm. oh. We get, we get it's everyone everyone up on the second Sorry. floor, on the top in the uh, the ramparts and whatnot, um, with Miss Salaria, and uh, we we kind of bait them in too. We have a couple folks in here making it look like we're digging a hole or something somewhere, uh, and then we bait them into it. And once they get on the island, then we have everyone on the second floor uh, unload on them with. Uh, you know, their pistols and, you know, what have you. They do, but I think we we might have a little bit of trouble of firing them from the top of the, the you know, the, the walls down inside the, uh, uh, on the island. You know, they're more for defending from ships and whatnot, so we kind of want to get them here. So yeah. Where do you think they'll best approach from? I'm thinking the, the. I think they'll probably surround us, uh, judging by what, uh, yeah, the lady said. Uh, you know, we've uh, cut off one avenue at least. Do we know where uh, deepest waters come from? Maybe they will come from there first. Maybe they don't like to be in shallow waters for too long. I don't know. Oh, here's an adorable cannon. Uh, you guys should have access to its stats. That one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Is there a way that but we the can, cannons, like... the cannons on the island do require some work to get them fixed up and good to go. So it's all about how you want to invest your time preparing. Nikolai yeah. just keep, keeps thinking about how he's going to do, like, anime Nikolai again and uh, is excited. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I... I think uh, was it if we get Thogram to work on either the traps or fixing the cannons, since he has a whole feature that does that. Uh, yeah. Uh, we either prepare some sort of like spell trap on the like the beach area, or wherever you think they'll like approach or get some like pit traps going on, cover them with leaves, and put some like the little wood stakes at the end, at the bottom. Get some like good that skewer action uh-huh uh, that sounds good um i'm really trying to think of like what would be the best way to trap somebody with like a spell like or if there's a way we could like hold the spell for like a long time and be like oh they stepped on that square they set off a fireball or whatever but i don't think there's anything that, really uh, does that. that would be you're, you're thinking about glyphs of warding that's something glyphs of warding does yeah, we just got to be careful because we got to make sure we can kind of spring the trap once the big fella arrives, you know, just in case they decide to kind of poke and prod at us with little fodder uh, Sahogan, you know, we don't... Uh, want attacking, attacking in waves is definitely one of their strategies. Yeah, so we don't want to scare them off, maybe, you know. Maybe we keep everybody on the top floor uh, kind of down and hidden, um, and then we kind of handle the first couple waves and you know until some of the big fellas show up and then we get everybody else um, i like it to, to join in you know 
Yeah, if um no, I, I think it's very good, um, Mr. Thagram. One thing I would like to do is um kinda um be up top it um and um make I don't know, animate objects seems like it could be useful here. Mm -hmm. Um but I don't want to get hit because I've I've seen what that does before with a dragon. Um is are any of these walls that we can't can we face the cannons and board? Would there be any way to face any of them in board? Uh, yeah, I mean, you're a you're a forge cleric. You can you can di you know yeah. dismantle them, set them up somewhere else. Yeah, totally. Hmm. That's cool. How many? Uh, so I had a couple ideas. I wanted some of the, the my two dwarves, the the boat dwarves, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> to put some kind of like superficial wounds on the the ship to kind of make it look like it's been damaged to kind of go along with the the um the letter okay so that way like if someone looks at it from a distance they're like oh they can kind of see that like, it, it looks like it's sustained damage their suggestion is to uh, through magic they kind of shrug as they say this uh move a big rock so that it looks like the rock um smashed through the hole but it really just sort of wedges your ship gently against the shore mm -hmm. but from a distance it would look like oh damn they got a rock sticking out of their ship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's that's their suggestion. Okay. That's cool. They seem very pr they seem very proud of their suggestion, uh, giving each other pats on the back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then, how many cannons do you think if I could fix if I if I devoted the majority of my time along with some assistance from someone else, like? um we'll do uh let's see are you using magic to do so um because that's that's obviously got its own rules to handle that uh otherwise um this would probably be smith tools or tinkering tools either one could be used and we would probably just use increments of five so whatever your check was um you know we would assume that's uh 5 10 15 20 25 that kind of thing that would be how many you were able to get back online um okay. through mundane efforts okay so so i have tinkers tools and smith's okay. tools i think tinkers tools i get an additional bonus because i have proficiency with the living gloves from that right so i think it gives an additional i think i get double the proficiency bonus okay from it i have to i have to double check that here in a second but could i use um I guess maybe blessing of the forge with that not blessing of the forge um uh artisan's blessing my channel divinity to help with the fixing it uh well that's what I mean like uh the artisan's uh blessing pretty much lets you turn something into something else right yeah, oh but but the it's, cost, it's the, the cost here. Yeah, yeah 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 um, I would assume that we could just throw, uh, either advantage or we'll do like, uh, like a plus five to the check. And then so if, there, if there's somebody else who has training in Tinker's tools, then you can make the check with advantage. Cause we'll can just, use... we'll just do, we'll just do a party check for it, which technically Tari does, but I don't know if Tari is going to want to dedicate their efforts to some other project for preparation. I'm, while yeah, I'm, I'm happy to help. Okay. While I'm doing it, can I use? I, I just want. I want to use divine intervention on it, actually, and see if I can get a little bit of Gon's help with repairing sure. as many cannons as possible. Okay, roll your D one hundred. Fuck! <laughs> oh man, it's <laughs> very close. Uh, you definitely feel. Uh, I, you definitely, I know. Yeah. You definitely feel like uh, Gond is got your back on this one, but as far as stepping in personally, it's not time for that. Not yet. Mr. Thagram, do you have anything that gives bonus to um, uh, Constitution saving throws in the in the in, in the the parlance of these days? Uh, I actually don't think I do. Okay. Um. I guess I'll, I'll just use, if, if I can use Channel Divinity, Artisan's Blessing to help kind of do anything, then I'll, I'll use both my Channel Divinities for the day to help with that. Yeah, like repair walls and bolster, uh, like, um, 
everybody's efforts to repair things and build things and all that jazz. Yep, totally makes sense. Okay. Okay. All right, let me see if I can find the living gloves real fast, and then I'll... Uh... Let's see. When you make an ability check using chosen, you add double your proficiency. Okay, yeah. So just do tinker tools with. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, with either advantage or plus five, up to you. Should I do it with with what though? With oh, uh, if. if if Therese's helping you, then just do advantage and plus five. Um, assuming that's what uh, Therese will be doing to kind of yeah. prep for the arrival of your enemies. Uh, with what, uh, I meant what what um, skill though, like strength, um, constitution, wisdom. Oh, oh, oh. In this particular instance, um, gosh. Uh, because you're trying to figure out how best to fix them, but they are heavy as hell. Um, and you are going to be working on a bunch of them for a long time. I would say intelligence, constitution, uh, or strength. Your choice. I think we'll go with strength. Okay. So advantage. So that's 13. So plus another. Uh, so that's 17 plus another four with um, the living gloves. Okay. Uh, 17 plus 4, 21. Okay, so you get four cannons fully operational. Nice. Nice, nice. Can I, can I get four of them on the, the second map crash? Uh, yeah. The top floor map? Uh, let's see. Oh my gosh. My roll 20 is, um, it's kind of spazzing out a little bit. All right, here we go. Uh, you guys should be able to move these. Oh my god. I'm sorry. That's like all your crew. Times two. <laughs> uh, what the hell? Alright, I'll just drag out a new cannon. Anyways, while I'm struggling to uh, get this working, um, what other preparations do you guys have? So yeah, you guys should have control over these cannons. So you can move them, place them, rotate them, uh, whatever you want to do. How quickly can they be moved? Like like twenty feet a turn, thirty feet a turn? Uh it depends on the strength of the people there and the teams, but uh generally they're pretty damn heavy. Uh but they could yeah. be moved if they need to be, yeah. Um I mean these are not uh these are not an optimal thing. Like uh most bad guys are like it's cheaper just to have giants throw rocks than to have to train yeah. a cannon crew and buy a cannon and care for a cannon and everything. Like, there's a reason that certain things just didn't catch on, um, as it were. Yeah, so Kat, yeah. Yaru's going to be flying, uh, like, probably about 100 feet above the ground, looking out. Um, and Nikolai will be doing, like, a little bit of the warging thing to let people know where the cat sees people coming from, assuming the cat okay. sees people coming. Yep. Um, and that's, I think it's it for me and the cat. All right. Fair enough. Uh, your crew just starts placing themselves randomly to look cool. That, that's the only strategy behind uh, where they're going. Uh, all right. So, Alaria, are you more than likely. Up? Oh, sorry. Keep going, Illyria. Oh, I was just asking Illyria if she were going to be up on the, the top. Up oh, on the roof. yes. Hands down on the roof. <laughs> Would it be alright if I joined you up there? Of course. Alright. I'm a little scared. 10,000 oh, Sahaukin sounds like rather a lot. <laughs> Should be interesting. I'm kind of excited. <laughs> Like, I don't know if the whole land mass that we're standing on is enough to destroy 10,000 Sahaukins. <laughs> Do you think they'll send them all, though? I don't... I, it depends on how... Um, how foolhardy they are. How, how much they believe themselves to be better than us, I guess. I don't know. That's true. 
and then crash um just try to do what we can to like piece together the best kind of cannon crews that we can muster sure sure um uh, uh, i know it's coming fast and furious um uh, nikolai i think have... skull has a roster of your crew so maybe he has some insight on how he wants or how you guys might want to divvy up uh crew and put aces in their places and all that jazz You with a skull? <laughs> no, he's I guess skull. muted right now. Oh. But it, he's been posting. Okay. Okay. Did you have a follow up question, uh, Nikolai? Yeah, Nikolai, I have a question. Uh, who currently carries Surge? And um, I, I worry it might do weird things once uh, Sahaugan come on to land. Oh, it's literally in Thagram's pants. In a lead box, too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I get that seems pretty safe. All right. I'm good. Sorry. What, what was? Yeah, the it's like it's in a lead box in a pocket dimension. Uh, I just was pointing out that you you usually keep a roster of your crew, so you might have a better idea of where to put the aces in their places, crew-wise. Um, let me... Yeah, I have it here. Let's see. I don't know, they all seem... Uh, we do have a couple rogues, I guess. I thought they were all just basic, like, pirates, though. So. Okay. Um, then I guess it doesn't matter where you put them. Okay. All right. If that's the case, then uh, I'll just randomly put them uh, with cannons. Thanks for the feedback. Can we put like the strong boys with the cannons? Like maybe like the dwarfs? Uh, yeah, sure. The stronger people that can like move them around yeah, if we need large to. Large Goliath fellow. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Okay. And Goliath. Man, calling this Goliath strong. That's like saying because he's tall, he plays basketball. I mean, <laughs> you know, he might just have big bones. Uh, all right. Let's see. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so, um, I guess. While I'm distributing these guys, I mean, you know, let me know what what else you're what else you're doing, what else you're planning. So uh, All right. I'm uh, ready. Yeah, I think we could uh, assemble some sort of log trap like right here. Uh, so like when they get ashore, they could like knock all the logs down. Hopefully, squish a couple, and maybe like a bomb trap or something, or like roll a bomb down this way. And do sure. you want any people down on the the ground, or do you want everybody to be on the second floor? Everybody on the second floor, preferably. Yeah, okay. I agree. Kind of hiding, and then we will we'll fight off the first couple waves, and then we'll lure lure them into basically a kill zone, or like um, mm -hmm. this this set of beach down here is kind of like a little kill zone. Okay. Um, I know we've got uh, this beach uh, shut off with the boat, but there are these two um, paths up up to the to the uh, keep, such as it were, uh, the fortress. Um, is there any way to casually uh, prevent them from being used? Mm, good point. They are coming from the ocean, so they could literally come from any direction. Um, I can fabricate basically a rock wall, <laughs> I guess. Because we have more than enough time, so it'd take yeah, me right. 10 minutes to cast, um... Hmm. 
Hmm. Yeah, eight connected five foot cubes. I mean, I could try to use, I mean, I could cast it the first day four times and basically make giant, like, 10 foot high rock walls to kind of help keep some of them, maybe funnel them over to the other one. Yeah, let me get you some walls to work with. And These are just... in five foot increments, or you want them in like five by tens? Um, it says you can do eight connected five foot cubes, or you can fabricate a large ten foot cube. I guess. Is it a ritual thagrim, or what is it? No, it's it takes ten minutes. It's a spell slot. But if we're if we're here two nights, then I can get the I'll have all my spell slots back the second night. So or the uh, second day. Yeah, yeah, cool. I say we we do all kinds of stuff. Make the beaches as as unappealing as possible. No, so I could say we make it quicksand, and I could disguise it as a normal beach, and then they step on it and they sink. Oh, so this is um this is uh risky, y'all. Do you want to bury me in the sand in the beach? <laughs> I, I I realize we don't know where they're gonna come from. But I could come up as a Tyrannosaurus Rex, and it could be fun. But it's risky. It's really risky. If you want to be a T-Rex, why don't you just jump down off the roof and transform yourself? Now, if um, you want, we could try a slight mini-game approach where you have a lot of your preparations made, but then each of you receives, like, a Yu-Gi-Oh! trap card. And essentially, at any point during the oncoming uh, battle, you could spring your trap card and just say, "This is the trap that went off." Okay. Sure. So, so each of you, de defined by, of course, your own playstyle and flavor, uh, could surprise me and each other uh, with whatever dope ass crazy trap uh, you decide happens. Um, which could be extra fun because as the flow of the battle changes, uh, maybe you change your mind about what your uh, what your strategy is. So how many pieces of wall do you need there? Um, that sounds super fun. I'm going to do it four times. So basically eight five-foot cubes times four. So 14. 16? 28. 28. Maybe? I don't know. I'm not good at math. Okay, eight uh, five foot cubes. So I gave you five by tens. So you would need four of those times three, right? So that'd be 12? Does that make sense? If there were eight cubes, but I made them double, double wides here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then three times. Yeah, so you four get 12. Oh, four, four times. times. So si 16, 16. So two, four, yeah. six, eight. 10, 12, uh, 13, 14, 15, 16. Eight connected five foot cubes. So oh, I guess I don't need that many because you, you could just, just expand them to be um, basically um, 40 feet each. Right, yeah. Well, right, because eight connected five foot cubes would be uh, 40 feet long. One, yeah. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. I, I gave you the right Legos. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the pain here is the five foot. Like, you're basically a Minecraft spell. You're basically getting Minecraft blocks to work with. No, the pain here is Illyria. <laughs> oh. <laughs> ah. Oh. Ah. All right. <laughs> ah. <laughs> There's other pain. There's other pain. Um, I, I, I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. Am I a pain? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not you. All right. So, with your. That's your name, though, right? 
it your, is, it with is. your six <laughs> secret yeah, with your six secret traps uh laid out and ready to be sprung uh Thagrim, uh building with his legos and uh four cannon crews ready to blast shit um the ship has been set up to look uh like it got smashed on the rocks and it is beached it is officially beached um short of some kind of teleportation magic or an invisible blimp uh you guys are committed to this course of action so in the time that approaches this could be the end of our campaign do you guys have <laughs> anything that you want to say to each other or role play out because i'm gonna be honest this could be really bad but we're already um, committed to it so where's let's... where's spencer he's, oh he's there right he is here. yeah is he over here? okay yeah. sorry we keep multiple maps um cat yaru will kind of come from another map to snuggle spencer okay uh, <laughs> kind of give him like a, a lick like in the face and like like put his whiskers right in his yeah yeah uh-huh <laughs> okay um and that's um that's his friend and that's all he has to say to spencer before anything bad happens he will return the lick but i don't know if katiara will like it or not because it's a lot of whale that's drool. a lot <laughs> yeah it's a lot oh, i think he's gotten used to it and he's wearing his pirate hat right now um, <laughs> okay so he feel he feels pretty dope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. Uh, uh, let's see. Wh where's the bomb zone, by the way? Just so I'm not in it. Is so it if you look at the, the yeah, yeah, look the at the the second the second uh, screen or the second map. Yep. Yep. So basically, the idea we just lure them in here, and then once we get the big guys or we get overwhelmed, we'll we can have the cannons go off, but we'll keep everybody up top hidden uh, with sidearms and whatnot, and we'll okay. thin them off. Just wanted to make sure. I'm going to... Um, uh, can Spencer, um, Illyria, help bury me in the sand? Sure. <laughs> he will happily start digging, <laughs> if that's what you want. Um, Are you going to be okay yeah. under there? <laughs> um, yes and no. Yes and no. But why? But but why can't? If you're a T-Rex, then you wouldn't even mm -hmm. take any damage jumping down, would you? Of, the crew. Or is that... of all of the crew, I you won't. Yeah, that's, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna turn on control for all the crew. Absolutely not. I'm sorry. I, that, I'm definitely at my limit at that point. Right. Um, you can tell me where you want the crew to go, and I'll put them there. But they, yeah, they're not set up to be controllable. Sorry. All right. All right. Um, Jeez, uh, Nikolai um, pats Spencer on the snout, gives him a smile, and goes under the sand for a little bit. <laughs> He'll give you a lick. <laughs> the top I lick it back. I mean, it's, 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 it's good for it. Um, can I pull Skull aside? Yeah. It's not busy. And I'm going to grab your hand and place two dragon tooth necklaces in it. There's a one that has like two gashes in it. And I'm going to tell you that this one's for Ferris and there's uh, to symbolize like his two deaths. And then there's going to be a very, very inconspicuous gone symbol on it. <laughs> So you can give that to Ferris, and then uh, another one that has a symbol that represents each of his new friends that he's made on this journey. So like a little music note for Tari, a fire for Nikolai, an arrow for Illyria and stuff. Um, so you can give that to Ibn Fang. And then the third one is going to be the most pristine tooth that I was able to collect and there's going to be a lot of really cool green accents on the necklace part and I'm going to kind of like hold it up and just say to you are you going to bend over or am I going to have to jump to try to fit this on? Yeah, you 
Deep end, yeah. We'll, we'll kneel. <laughs> Crouch down. <laughs> and only the best for you, Skull. And I'll put it around your neck and give you a little kiss on your cheek. And um, I hope we make it out. Out of this alive. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I will just grab onto your hand and um, just say thank you for um, being such a huge help in that last fight. We would not have been able to do it without you. And I will walk away very shyly. <laughs> he grabs you and pulls you into a hug. <laughs> Graciously received the hug. <laughs> We're gonna make it, right? Myself. Okay, I'll watch your back. <laughs> um, and yeah, crash. I could. It just most it, of the. This would be an impossible scene to transpire without someone honking their way uh, over <laughs> and honking their way in between. Uh, and someone slithering their way over and slithering their way in between and then I'm pretty sure at some point a cat still soaking wet with saliva would uh, not want to be left out but also not want to be a part of all that nonsense and so <laughs> would be hovering awkwardly uh, dripping uh, saliva on people. I think that pretty much sums up the pet, <laughs> pet situation uh, alright so uh, where do you where do you need peeps? Where do you want peeps at? I, uh, I feel I like I'd like most that... of them inside. I don't want them like. Just yeah, yeah. I was themselves. yeah. I was told they were supposed to all go to the second floor if possible. Is that still yeah. the plan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So nobody yeah. down on the ground. Everybody upstairs. All yeah. right. Barricade. Mostly. Yeah. That if sounds we can. good. Okay. Just shooting guns off the battle bits. Try to kill space how good uh, as possible. Yeah. All right. They can manage that. Yeah. And then if if um, things look bad, they should. Uh, uh, we should try and make our last stand. Uh, quote unquote. Probably on top of the second roof. How high is um? How is this? How high is this off the roof here? Uh, the, the kind of tower. That's the. Oh right. Um. So. Yeah, the roof itself, they are, it's all like the same height, so this tower isn't uh, too oh. terribly much higher than the rest. Um, yeah, but they're, it's not shown on the map, uh, but this balcony right here is down at the uh, ground level. Uh, it's actually a little bit lower than the ground level, um, you know, because of the, the side of the hill there. There it would be a door that comes out onto the roof, uh, and that would come out here. Uh, so this tower itself would be 10 feet higher uh, than the fort itself. Uh, the roof of the fort is only 15 feet up off the ground. Okay. This is a squat little. This is a squat little fort. All right. Uh, I can see Illyria and Tariq trying to swim away. Are you guys trying to get to the roof? There we go. <laughs> no, there we go. I, I, I okay. put myself on it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Sorry. Just... <laughs> uh, you swim away, they're done. Yeah. <laughs> they, like, I, you handed out all of your heartfelt gifts, and you were like, and... All right, I'm out of here. Out. Peace. Yep, I'm out. <laughs> oh, oh, what's the Ebon thing up to? Uh, I mean, other than breaking it on that hug, uh, he is excited. He feels, he, yeah, he feels that ambushing your prey is the best way to, uh, to win a fight. Right. Yeah, he, and, he sees the sand wink at him then. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, no, he, uh, instinctively knows that lying in wait for your prey is the correct strategy. So he is happy to see that he has finally rubbed off on you guys, uh, and that you're, uh, uh, adapting uh, after all this time so uh, a black dragon in a swamp most of the time it could take out anybody it's after it just has to slowly but surely stalk them and take them out unless they've got precious baby that they've stolen that maybe they uh, 
they get a little too too over uh, over excited all right um it is also suggested that you close the doors uh, down below which we'll assume has happened uh and sort of barricade them so that they think that you know getting inside is a big deal yeah yeah um tactically some of your crew do point out that uh it seems pretty simple like if they go this way they've got two sets of doors to get to us but if they go this way they just gotta drop down to this ledge and go through this door so they're not sure um, if you want to do something extra for that southernmost oh, door of the I tower, see it. okay, which, yeah, wait, yeah, that's wait, a which huge problem. <laughs> uh, right, right here. Can you just remove uh, that door, Thogram? <laughs> yeah. Oh, is is that that's bottom level? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah this is actually down a little ways, right? So, like, it would be a pain, but if they climbed up out of the sea to there and went in through, or if they dropped down from the ledge and went in through, there's just that one door to worry about. So, if you have a wall, maybe you want to wall it up? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I can I can cast another. Or you can fabric. just dump, dump a bunch of stuff in front of it, take one of these boats and jam it in there. I don't know. Uh, you can have two minis at once if you want to just drag out to both maps oh, okay. but here you go yeah i can is this, i mean i could just fabric fabricate a wall there as well okay. i mean yeah so we it. yeah we'll put some stuff there is this just... um a cave on the outside or let go um yeah, I mean, it probably could be, but for our purposes, it yeah. is. Okay. It's there, not. It's yeah. not there. <laughs> okay. Oh, and Crash, because I can see mm -hmm. this being a question later. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to try and not be in the main path where I got buried, just so, like, I don't get stamped on. <laughs> okay. Again, you, you got your trap card, so you'll tell me where you were buried. Uh, don't tell me ahead of time. I don't want to know okay. where you were buried. Okay, yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm nowhere. Yeah. I'm going to try to sink your battleship, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I do, and it's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, my gosh. This is turning into some fucking Warhammer 40k shit up in here. Um, okay. So, you have prepared, I hope. Uh, let me know when you are ready, and I will dim the lights. I can't really do that. We're not in Foundry. But I can... Well, you know what? I could probably do it. Uh, yeah, I could probably do it. For, for half the map. Um, yeah, let me know when you're ready, and I will I will make it happen. So, um, Crash, can I use, like, a... To just have, like, a duplicate lead box with, the, if with any time that kind of looks like the box we have Surgeon? Sure, sure. Do you? Oh, you want like the actual mini for it? Yeah, let me grab that real quick. Yeah, yeah we're just gonna put it like kind of uh, in this little little kill zone area. <laughs> I'm this, this, Elmer this little, 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 uh, yeah. a little box with a stick. <laughs> we're gonna pull the stick away. It's gonna trap the one guy <laughs> who goes and gets it. No, I think we should have the. They're gonna know we have the box. I thought the plan was to we were gonna pretend to be like burying it by the time they got. Yeah, here. that's that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, like that's. There's... So there are going to be people down on the beach that are yeah, on no. guard guard duty to pre <laughs> pretend that they're burying this uh, this footlocker essentially in the sand. Got it. Okay. Which would explain the. They're going to see it's not there. They're just going to leave, or they're just going to kill us. Whatever. <laughs> All right. That's that's where it would, it would be buried. Or it okay. Buried. So uh, so are you going to? So you are going to bury it there. Yeah right. yeah yeah. All right. So. Yeah, and if uh, it, even if it only is it delays, kind of like, like a ha it's like a half-ass job, like so like the, it's pretty obvious where it's buried. You gotta leave like a fucking shovel, <laughs> shovel like the next yeah. one. Put an X. <laughs> yeah, but it's, oh, it's, it's for all intents and purposes, it's a full lead box. That way, if somebody scries for like a lead box or looks for an object box, like that box yeah. can be found. You know. No, I like. No, that I got you. You go. Yeah, you go. Like they, they have scrying magic. They have priestesses. So you yeah. go through the motions of burying this fake box on on the shore. I dig it. After we're done burying it, I'm gonna like get everybody like kind of huddled up and be like, um, 
Tallgrim, can we have one last round of uh, Fire Forge for old time's sake before this all kicks off? Oh yeah, yeah, Everyone definitely. Should... Some of that. Can you uh, pour it into the sand at some point? <laughs> <laughs> how how committed <laughs> are you to this T Rex plan? Are you are you living in the sand now? Is that... I am. I am. Okay. Yep, with a straw, with a straw, and for Fire Forge liquor. All right, fair enough. Uh, Thogram, if you don't already have it, take deep inspiration for taking charge of these operations. And uh, Nikolai, please take charge for being so committed to your T-Rex erupts from the sand trap that you now live in the sand. So, it will likely take the rest of the campaign to get sand out of your taint and other sensitive areas. Because that is how sandy you are now. Wait, so. do I have a taint or do I have a cloaca? Or, or what do T-Rexes have exactly? Oh, it's T-Rex 100% as a cloaca, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I thought. So that's what it's going to have okay. to come out of. Uh -huh. Alright, fair enough. Fair uh, enough. Other details. I think we should have... If they'd like to attack at night, we should have some lights kind of in the main buildings. And I think we're hanging out in there, and everyone's on the roof. Just kind of like... Oh, uh, keeping lights lit. Things. Yeah, keeping yeah. lights lit. That's smart. That's smart. I think we're in there, and then we all just pop up from the, uh, the sides and start shooting. Okay. Mm. All right. You tell me when to hit the start button. Yes, I'm gonna. I got go. ten thousand minis loaded. That's why your uh, roll twenty is crashing. So. All right. I think we should go. Okay. Now I have sand in my cloaca. I'm gonna. Oh. I'm gonna find a heavy crossbow oh. and some bolts. <laughs> I mean, okay. T-Rex has a, a tongue that can like sand out of other people's cloacas. That is technically something any tug could do, but I guess the T Rex tug might be more or oh. less, I'm gonna say, skilled at that. Alright. Uh, uh -huh. let, let's see. It depends on what year of T Rex we're dealing with. Uh, let's see if I could find some good music here. I mean, and... I feel like you put me on like a tiny island where like dinosaurs could exist for the first time ever in a long time. So, you know. <laughs> And that's the first thing they do is offer the services to take care of sand. I got you. Yep. I got you. Yep. Uh, All right. Uh, let's see. Trying to find some good music here. Uh, this will work. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm always in the wrong bot channel. There we go. All right. Um. So, uh, I will make it nighttime as things start to settle in. Here we go. There's mm -hmm. two Illyrias and two Spencers on mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. upstairs map. Can you? Oh, on the upstairs map, sure. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, no worries. All right. Uh. They, of course, wait for nightfall uh, to come. There is pounding rain that we can't put down because it'll break some people's browsers. Uh, let's see. Where are the extras? I think you can delete yourselves, but I'll go ahead and grab them. Uh, boop. Yep. And this is like, where's Waldo? Oh, there you are. Boop. Thank you. Got it. All right. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so... That uh, that second night that you're there, uh, they do start to rise up out of the waves. Uh, many, many uh, basic bitch Sahaugen. Uh They let loose their above the water um, battle cries, which is disturbingly like a murloc uh, with their uh, <laughs> as they begin to charge uh, the shore. Uh, there are many, many, many of them. Uh, this first wave, however, is nothing to you with your cannons uh, and your guns and all that jazz. So fortunately, you have enough peeps that you are able to sort of handle it as they are bursting out of the water and rushing the shore. Oh, crash uh, for, for the guns? Like, I, I wouldn't want to use the guns on, like, the, like right off the oh, bat. Oh, like, the, like, you wouldn't want to use any firearms at all? So you're just going to use... 
no, no. If for... it looks man, if it looks manageable for us, like uh -huh. as our group, then we just handle it ourselves, and then you know, maybe give the word to have like everybody else open up if need be. Gotcha. gotcha. If, if it seems overwhelming, kind of situation. Okay, so and... you want you want the rest of the crew to sort of stay hidden, is what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so. In that case, they are going to get much further inland um, if, yeah, if there's not uh, a tremendous amount of return, unless uh, your wizard boy is going to be, you know, burning his fireballs, but he's currently hiding here. So um, if that's the case, with the first wave, some of them are going to make it to the beach. And then there are enough of you oh. and enough Illyria pains that they are going. You guys could start uh, opening fire. Yeah. Uh, yeah remember, I would, you I would... each have one trap that you could spring at uh, any point during this battle. I think. Uh, weren't we planning on being on the on the actual ground? I, I don't know. You guess we'll be ready to start. I'm just trying to try to keep up with you. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm just confused Remember the two maps. Sorry. All right, so one map is for upstairs, and one map is for downstairs. Uh, yeah. But, but, yeah, that's why I'm making both maps match up. They are the same okay. place, and you guys are the same people. Yeah. If you're on the right-hand map, you're up top. If you want, we could do everything on the right-hand map and only go to the left-hand map when we are inside a building. Well, that, that works for me. Yeah, okay. I'm good with that, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, given that, uh, who is down on the ground, uh, over by the, uh, pretending to bury stuff, leaning on a shovel like a good government employee, that kind of thing. Because <laughs> that is who would be running into these, uh, basic bitches of Haugen in this first wave. Yeah, I'll go As they just Haugen. keep coming, and coming. Oh, let's, well. I mean, they got 10,000, so they're not afraid to, you know, maybe throw about 100 at you this first wave, so... And Nikolai is going to stay in the, in the sand. Yeah. All right. Gonna... Your walls are definitely proving to be uh, a pain in the ass over here. Uh, so they are it's slowing them down. Uh, Skull, I assume that you're firing over the edge at these? Yes? Yeah. No? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Northwest Quadrant. They're going to hit this wall, and then it's going to take them time to climb over. All right. Uh, these, they're all realizing that it's pretty easy to get up on this beach. Uh, so there is sort of an inclination to start all converging on the central beach. I'm going to pop, um, uh, what should we call it? Uh, not Divine Guardian, but uh, Sacred Spirit Guardians. Guardians. Spirit Guardians? Yeah, Spirit Guardians. Okay. All right, so down on the beach, uh, might be easier just to turn an aura for this one. Uh, it's 15 foot. There we go. All right. Um, yeah, so as you turn on the spiritual guardians, as they the first few run into it and die, um, because you guys are higher level and they are little babies, uh, they do start to um, kind of pile up around the dig site, trying to get at what is buried. Uh, yeah, I, I meanwhile, basically... meanwhile, your allies yeah. from up top are just launching crossbow bolts left and right, uh, trying to take them out. Uh, Pharaohs, are you Eldrick Blaston? Uh, yeah. Okay. Just All right. Uh, the presence of Thagram's uh, spiritual guardians is definitely making them rethink their strategies. So they do uh, kind of hang back and begin uh, throwing their javelins uh, as such. So that is problematic because they are at a amount of creatures that they start using the mob rules, uh, which is to say if they have enough creatures doing something, they will succeed. Uh, uh -huh. And you you have made yourself the central focus of this uh, because you have like these dwarf angels flying around you, pile of uh, dead Sahagan. They have identified you as the threat on the battlefield. 
uh, how would you guys shift your play to prevent Thogrim from being overwhelmed? Again, I'm keeping this pretty loose because I don't mm. want to have a 17-hour Warhammer battle. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we're keeping this as narrative as possible uh, for most of this, uh, this siege, essentially. I mean, let's be fair. If I dodge, they're not hit. <laughs> Well, no, mob <laughs> rules, they automatically hit. Like, no, I yeah, you, so. yeah, mob rules don't give a <laughs> there's shit enough about that. There's enough spears that would cover each quarter inch of your, your square footage. So. <laughs> yeah. As they so start to... eventually they would overwhelm you unless there was some support to stop them. No, um... As they start to mob up, I would cast Hypnotic Pattern. Um, okay. Um, sort of the wave. Where we're over the, like, probably here, but wherever the um, biggest concentration was. Right, mm-hmm. I'd uh, back them up uh, with like that was uh, away from... with the sickening radiance on the floor, just like all all this. All right, now sickening radiance is a friendly fire, right? I believe so. So I want to okay. get it off of. Them. Let's see how far, how big is that? 120. Let me check. There's 120 feet. All right. Uh, Spreads with a thirty-foot radius sphere centered on a spot of your choosing. Yeah, let me get you one of those real quick. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I guess I'm just the thing through a straw in a standstill. <laughs> fair, fair. Uh, let's see. Like this Make it. Uh, this will work. I I do too. Yeah, it's good. All right, let's see, six defeats, and we'll do um, that and that. All right, where do you where do you want to put your nuclear radiation? Oh my god! Oh, sorry, gosh, it's not sixty. Massive. It's not sixty feet. Sorry, it's thirty. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Okay, that was like All the right. island dies. Yeah. Right here. Okay. Um, between the uh, hypnotic pattern uh, expertly cast, so uh, mark off spell slot for that, the fourth level uh, sickening radiance, and the spirit guardians, they cannot advance on the beach anymore. Um, there are dozens upon dozens of dead Sahaugan floating in the water here. Uh, they are being forced to either retreat or try other avenues uh, of attack. Uh, I would say that given your efforts, you successfully um, stop this first wave of lobby attackers. Uh, you see many of them uh, continue throwing javelins, hissing, uh, growling, posturing, uh, but none of them dare uh, get close to these effects. Many of them do retreat back into the water. Uh, to go and get stronger reinforcements. So prepare yourselves for that next wave. All right. Uh, time time passes about ten minutes or so, and you see bursting up from the water uh, some of these critters. Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. Uh, they look like if Ch- Cthulhu and a crab had a baby. Uh, they have many, many slimy uh, tentacles hanging from their mouth uh, area. And they have sort of a crab body with sort of a lobster body parts at the same time. It's a really exciting mixture of creatures. Uh, there are quite a few of them. Uh, and some of them are just kind of pounding on the walls, uh, trying to knock them down and joining the smaller Sahaugan. Uh, some of them do begin actually attacking the ship uh, to try and smash holes in it and get through the ship. Uh, others just begin kind of climbing up. What is your strategy for these? I'm going to cast uh, Daylight. Okay. Because uh, by if it's been longer than 10 minutes, so my Spirit Guardians is done. So whichever the nearest concentration is that I can see. 
Right, they don't practice arcane magic, but they are intelligent uh, combatants with access to divine magic, so they definitely were gonna, are going to pace their waves to, you know, not not blow their wad in the first uh, first minute uh, kind of deal. Yeah, for sure. Um, for sure. So, yeah, you're going to cast Daylight. All right, hold on a second. So I can il illuminate, like, the lar where it looks like the largest concentration is kind of... Uh, let's see, that's 60 feet and another 20 feet uh, beyond, or sorry, 60 bright and then 60 dim. Uh, I think at this point they're going to care the most about the bright, so we'll do that. Uh, that is huge. So go ahead and put that wherever you think it needs to be. Uh. And sickening radiance, is that also a minute, correct? Uh, it's 10 minutes. Oh, 10 minutes. Okay. So it's just fading as the next wave shows up. Gotcha. All right. So I'm going to put it like directly over the water so it illuminates the majority. All right. Uh, these creatures are not fans of uh, the bright light, and the Sahaugen, relying on their dark vision, uh, are not fans of the bright light either. Uh, it definitely forces them to find other ways uh, to go. Fool, fooled before, um, they will try it again as they approach uh, the beach over here. Uh, but if I understand correctly the spell, you can just literally chase them around flashlight tag style uh, I with daylight. I don't think I can. Oh, okay. If I cast it on an area. Okay. Uh, well, they definitely try to run from it uh some of them are starting to um be able to climb up and get closer to the land uh so whenever the daylight here, yeah uh whenever the daylight spell goes off then everyone else in the top floor can open fire okay so everyone's uh allowed to come into hiding and fire or are you gonna still yeah. hold some people back yeah except for okay. the cannons the cannons will be basically my trap Okay, fair enough. Uh, as it is, uh, these guys are going to do some damage to the walls before they finally, you know, give up sort of thing. Uh, once your allies start joining in, they have a tremendous amount of HP and armored carapace. Uh, but, you know, action economy being what it is, the amount of time it's taken them to climb and everything else. Uh, does anyone have any other contributions they want to try to make to... Stop these guys? Um, <clears throat> if I see enough of them have started breaking through the walls down there, I will uh, mm -hmm. hop off myself with my flaming sword and meet them. Oh, damn. Okay. Covering. So you're going to leap off the walls and like engage them on the ground? It's pretty hype. Uh, yeah, I suppose. I don't know. Uh, unless we could concentrate straight <laughs> fire there, I don't know. Before skull drops down, I spring my trap, which is that like this floor basically falls away. Oh, nice. Um, okay. And basically, they're like buried in rubble at the bottom. All right. Fair enough. Ooh. No tiger though. Got it. Okay. No tiger. <laughs> if anybody could get a tiger on short notice, I feel like it would be Tariq. So, um, all right. So they kind of uh, fall into the trap. Both sides of the pass that they're climbing up kind of collapse in on them, uh, and they are forced to kind of retreat back down the hill as they try to consider other options. Over here, still have the issue of these guys trying to punch holes in the back of the ship. Uh, any plans to deal with those guys? Uh, As critters I'll... go, we're looking at nearly 100 HP and 16 armor class in these big uh, crab creatures. I mean, I would be focusing fire to try to stop these guys over here. Okay, fair enough. At your level with your abilities, uh, assuming you kicked off your normal uh, routine, you could easily uh, start to gun them down. Uh, likely, if it's just you um, culling this area, there will be damage to the ship, but perhaps not enough damage to puncture through uh, the hull. 
I'll ask, oh. like, yeah. these guys near me to focus their fire on on them as well and to help me. Once these all are turned back, I would I would also assist in that. Okay. Uh, fair enough. Uh, Thagram on the beach, are you uh, lighting up any other spells or are you keeping daylight going? Uh, so daylight, I don't have to concentrate on, so I'm mm-hmm. going to go ahead and pop because uh, it lasts an hour. So I'm going to use another daylight and basically illuminate the side over here. Okay. And then if possible, I want to try to call for the, the cannons to be fired at largest concentration. All right. Uh, right about there, work. Uh, yeah, I would kind of like like interpose myself and then it's just, just kind of like, you know, throw my hand up and just scream fire. Right. Um, as you do, uh, they open fire and uh, blast uh, these force of Halgan, uh to smithereens. Uh, these creatures a little bit stronger uh, begin to stagger through. Uh, ultimately, uh, it is an absolute bloodbath. Uh, the beach is just covered in uh, gore and scale and blood, uh, which sends the Sahaugan into an even deeper fervor of bloodlust. Uh, Crash, they, uh, oh, like, never mind. Okay. Uh, all right. Ultimately, um, your efforts here are going to be successful in holding off this wave. There'll be a few stragglers who kind of bob up and down in the water, uh, but mostly they are going to retreat to report their findings back to the rest of the forces. All right. Uh, You have a few minutes to prepare before the next wave comes. Do you have anything you need to discuss with each other? No, I was gonna blow some shit up, but I feel like we're doing pretty good. So uh, okay. let's keep let's keep going. Time, I'll use a pearl like we cover a spell slot, and that's about it. Okay, uh, fair enough. Can I get more people over on this end to help protect the ship? Oh, um, let's see. Uh, Kitty cat comes running over. Yeah. Um... Yeah, Skull's gonna come back up here and kind of. He wants to try and keep everyone's morale up if he can, and then he wants to send yeah, a couple people down to help Illyria with that. Okay. Yeah, Kitty Cat like rubs up against you, Illyria, um, and gives you a smile, and uh, smokes a cigarette and keeps going. <laughs> okay. Thargrim's going to run over to Nikolai's uh, Fireforge hole, and he's going to pour a little bit down there and tell him to, to just hang on. Uh, Fair oh, enough. Oh my goodness. I feel like you have to make a con saving roll. <laughs> All right, let's see. Yeah, that works. Okay. All right. Um, you hear the blowing of conch horn, uh, horns of war kind of deal as more forces uh, begin moving about in the water and surfacing in the water. Uh, you guys see. Uh, a gargantuan uh, shark silhouetted in the water. The shark has many fins. It is very big. Uh-oh. Ooh, that looks cool. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, so this thing is sort of circling the island, uh, waiting for its opportunity uh, to kind of get some good hits in. Uh, definitely a powerhouse there. Uh, and your allies are. Draw, their attention is drawn very much to this creature. All right. Uh, let's see. Compounding things uh, a bit more uh, are reports of a second set of fids to the south. All right. Now, these may or may not be the devil sharks of which you have heard. Um... Illyria, go ahead and give me a nature check. Okay. With advantage, because these are monstrosities, right? Or are you a beast-focused one? 
Your well, beast focus, right? So they they took that away. So. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. So just go ahead and give me a knowledge <laughs> nature check. Okay. Imagine giving the ranger anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Sorry, we, not everybody gets Christmas presents. That's ridiculous. <laughs> um, you do recognize these gargantuan creatures are in fact uh, devil sharks. They are um, decently armored, uh, extremely tough. Uh, and very intelligent. Um, more intelligent than Sahaugan, who are in turn more intelligent than humans. Uh, they are resistant to magic uh, and able to swallow their prey whole, as well as breathe out a 60 foot cone of supernatural cold water. Uh, so that's going to be really bad. Um, now, admittedly, you know, they're not, like, going to beach themselves or whatever. But a uh, 60-foot cone could definitely F some stuff up. So what is your play here, guys, as they begin torpedoing towards the island? Uh, a number of other things happen. There are There's a flurry of movement from the sea as another wave of Sahaugan burst forth, uh, Murloc screaming as they do. And amongst their number... Uh, there may or may not be some spellcasters uh, because the daylight spells uh, are targeted and dispelled as if by dispel magic. Unless a certain counterspelling guy wants to pop out and not be a T-Rex because uh, that's a thing. Wait, uh, wait, can I do it? <laughs> can, I, can, I, can I do it through my straw? Uh, I would say no. I would say no. Okay. It's just it's just daylight spells. It should be okay. Um, I so just the, wanted to ask, just in, just in case, just in case. So the dark uh, after you guys see the um, the shark spotlighted by the double daylights, the daylights suddenly uh, go out, and that's when you hear this just throng of uh, Sahaugan begin uh, <laughs> rising up out of the sea and storming the beach. Uh, simultaneously, while that's happening, uh, the devil sharks begin uh, moving closer to the island. Uh, you see frosty condensation streaming out of the uh, both sides of their mouths as they occasionally surface and then dive back in, almost like hellishly large kaiju dolphins. Uh, what is the preparation to not lose all of your crew to these massive-ass breath weapons? You, what kind of breath weapon is it? It is cold based. Oh. Um, uh, get into the sand, everyone, or behind a rock. Can I? Can I cast Wall of Fire? Uh, that would be that would be Hypocell. I would say that that would definitely uh, help against one of the breath weapons, uh, depending on where you place it and how you place it. Yeah, if, if I, I if I see, I see one, uh, if I can see it, then I would just straight line Wall of Fire. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In front of it. Okay. Uh, let's see. You are still down on the beach, so I, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It's 120 feet. Right, right, right. Okay. I'm just kind of taking into account that you're down on the beach. There's other parts of the island that you can't see. That sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, definitely keeping an eye on this one. It is gonna come. Uh, kind of barreling towards you at the beach and pseudo um, beach itself uh to try and toss out that breath weapon well, let me grab a 60 foot code so we could all remember just how ridiculously big it is uh, no that that's okay you don't no no it's okay I, no. I don't mind i don't mind uh yeah let's see uh here it is uh, oh, it's so pretty it is <laughs> Um, I, I would have yelled out like any information I know about these. Oh, for cookies. sure, yeah. Um, okay, so we're looking at know, something like, like that. <laughs> so it's like goes up and in, in all directions. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. So your plan is to drop a wall of fire at the same time, kind of deal. Like, yeah. If, it, if I see it beach itself, then I'm just gonna do. Um, all right. Basically, what's sixty feet long? So just a wall of fire. Um, okay. Let's see. Let's go all out. Let's push roll twenty till it breaks. Uh, hold on. <laughs> uh, let's see. Bas basically, like the length of the beach, I guess, sixty feet. 
yeah, we got a, we got something for that. Uh, Schwabam. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There you go. Uh, you should be able to grab it. I, I can only get the cone. Okay. There we go. <laughs> now remember, it does fire damage on the uh, one Opposing side of the side. wall. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So what we'll do is whatever damage your wall fire deals, we'll subtract for the damage its breath weapon's going to deal. So 20, 23. As sort of a direct cancellation of each other. All right, here we go. Oof. All right, so 56 points of cold damage reduced by 23. Uh, it does go uh, washing over you, your allies, and the battlements. Uh, those that are hit have to make constitution saves. I will say that up on the battlements, uh, you do mm -hmm. have some coverage from it, from the line of effect. Uh, it is not a dexterity-based one, though, so it is basically like chilling the air and barfing forth essentially like a tidal wave, because that's where the push effect comes from. Uh, so it is just vomiting forth like this icy cold wave that is washing over everyone. Um, asking for a friend, do I need mm -hmm. to make it craft? Um, you are so well hidden beneath the sand, my sweet baby boy, that uh, okay. you are fine. So. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. 56 minus 23 is, I want to say, 33. Yeah. Uh, so 33 points of cold damage is being served up, plus a 20-foot push. All right. Um, in doing so, I got to roll for these here dwarfs real quick. Nope, you are a cannon. I need the dwarf. Uh, let me move you over to the side here. All right. Mm -mm -mm. Crash, you said it's, it was going to be like two days before they attacked us, right? Right, it's been two days, yeah. Okay, so then I, I would have Divine Intervention again. Correct, yep. Okay. I really hope by the end of the campaign that that works out for you, because you seem very <laughs> interested in that ability. So, uh, let's see. All right, here we go. Constitution saves from your crew who were hit. I think it was just the ones that are on that southernmost cannon. One, yeah, it's me. Two... And three. Nice. Uh, all right. Dwarf made it, um, which is great. Uh, he's not thrown off the wall, uh, but he is uh, dropped. Uh, however, these two are flung uh, from the walls uh, to the ground below. Uh, more than likely, they're, they're, they're out of there. This is just what happens when... You have pirates. You can't love them all. They, they are going to die. Um, um, can I uh, s stabilize him with a healer's kit? Uh, yeah, start? you or can stabilize like him. Done? I mean, they're, they're NPCs, so, you know. like. But it's Stagrim's doors. I know. It's, it's my boy. <laughs> But if we were if we were doing that, the, the priestesses would be popping up all their dudes. Yeah, and okay, we'd be here okay, for the okay, rest yeah. of our lives. Yeah, you guys have the blood of heroes. That's why you can <laughs> yo-yo back and forth between life and death. Um, anybody dealing with this shark to the southwest? It looks like it is uh, kind of cruising up towards uh, the shoreline, scoping a good place to uh, blast uh, things. There are. Some people, including the the much loved fan favorites, uh, Sly <laughs> uh, Sly Web. So, is anybody, nobody, go once, go twice. I'll use. Um, Come on, help her. Oh, 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 eh, I mean, I'll you, use got, you got trap cards. What are they? Wait, wait. I use Wall of Fire. Oh, okay. Uh, if she beaches herself, or they beach them, the shark beaches itself, I will. Um, yeah, would it, is there a way that I could make the this, wall go like around there? Very, it has to like, be on the ground. Yeah. yeah, this one has a very like early '90s uh, free willy thing going on, or mid '90s. <laughs> like you think he's gonna like it, it's gonna jump out of the the water and kind of like uh, and then dive back into the water. Okay, uh, so I'll do that. Which I'll would do be that. hype as hell. All right, so you're gonna run this wall of fire uh, along there to try and intercept. Is that the plan? Yep. Good. Yep. Okay. Could I also take a couple shots at it with some just menacing attacks? 
kind of keep it. Sure. Yeah. Or... Make those. Make those attacks. Uh, armor class is 16 here. That's trying to hit them. All right. All right. And it's got to make a saving throw, yeah? Yeah, DC 20. Okay. All right. 20. Uh, it fails. All right. Uh, so as it begins to swing forward, uh, you frighten it off. Uh, that delays its action by uh, a round, right? Yeah, I know. Uh, it'll, it, so it'll kind of swim around, kind of come back sort of thing. Meanwhile, up here on the northernmost beach, uh, this thing is going to slowly kind of roll itself back towards the water. Is anybody planning to do anything before it goes back to the water to recharge its breath weapon? Um, oh. I'll re uh -huh. radiance that section of the water so everything like glows again. Okay. So, like... uh, go ahead and place this down wherever you think it needs to go. I feel like there's something out on right here, so. Probably. Well, yeah, this is like the dramatic tabard of the last group that conquered the silence. So, so you said there was like some clerics around, so I want to see if I can find out where they're uh, hiding. Or, so. Oh yeah, I but. mean they're they're definitely either mixed amongst the throng or dipping up and you know below the waves kind of thing as they take okay. their shots. I'll say right um, here. Fine. Am I able okay. to pinpoint those guys with the eyes of the eagle? Uh, yeah. Now that you know that they've got the the spellcasters have come out to play, I will let you know when they pop out. Uh, you have a pretty good sense uh, of what they look like compared to normal Sahagan. Uh, so I'll let you know when they are there. Uh, the priestess they look more happy. See? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I remember. I remember. Yeah. Uh, all right, so you're yeah. gonna keep an eye out for them. Got it. Uh, all right, with that sickening radiance, this thing is definitely going to uh, roll out of there. Does not want to be incinerated. Uh, these guys are having a terrible time. They are going to try their best to get through that incineration. Go ahead, and give me a damage roll off of that um, sickening radiance. Oof, 18. Um, you know what? It is too strong. Um, those that try to make it through, uh, they just sort of fall. They're charred bones, uh, radiating green, uh, magic as they just sort of fall to the ground, irradiated. Still not as mean a spell as heat metal, though. Uh, truth. Okay. So once again, holding that beach with that spell. Uh, you guys do realize that between the wall fire and the sickening radiance, you have locked off the speech. They, they cannot get up on there. But uh, you still have to deal with these two big beasts in the water. So the option here is you could engage them in an actual combat, or you could try and find a method to uh, essentially stop them remotely. Uh, it is up to you how you want to do that. Uh, if you engage them, uh, you can split your forces however you like, roll it to initiative. If you have a plan or trap that could stop these giant sharks, uh, because every three rounds, on average, they're going to be coming back and blasting you guys with these tidal waves. These are their, these are the Sahagan siege weapons, basically. Mm -hmm. This is what they, this is what they use to, to knock people out of ships and mess people up. This is, this is their big, big shot siege weapon creatures. I'll try to polymorph this one into, like, an aquatic snail. Okay, fair enough. Uh, it will try to make its wisdom saving throw. Uh, it does have magic resistance, so here we go. Uh, it fails. Uh, you turn into an aquatic Yay. snail for one minute. What is the follow-up to make sure that it cannot cause any further harm? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you bought everybody one, you bought everybody one minute. But what do you want to do with it while it's uh, during that one minute? Otherwise, it's gonna pop back up, right? Maybe, maybe Can... onto the on, onto the land somewhere quick. Okay. Can, Is there um, anybody that's say... willing to brave wall of? Well, I guess wall of fire would fade because of polymorph. Uh, can even things fly by for it? 
Uh, yeah, can yeah, he fly by for it and the then fly fly up into the air and oh, basically and once like a minute it. drops, then just drop it on sure, to sure. like I guess it's far away though, uh, so there's no like tidal wave. This this just drop it oh, onto the land. He wants to drop it here. on land. Yeah, he wants to make sure yeah. that it gets dropped on the land. Yeah, I, uh, I think it it will come back as shark. No, right? Like if you drop it, it will. Oh yeah. Come back oh oh yeah. It'll take all the leftover damage too. Uh, so let me check some maps real quick. This is a pretty hype idea. This is feeling more like Pathfinder. Uh, that's actually not a bad thing in this case. Uh, so let's see, he's got a 60 foot flight. Uh, we'll see it took one round for him to fly over and grab it. Uh, so let's see, times an, two it's times It's actually nine. an hour, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow, so you just want him to fly up. Uh, okay, do you want just to, you want just to ignore it for an hour or do you want to, do you want him to fly uh, up and drop it? For, it for a bit, yeah. Okay, and fair enough. Fly it, can fly it up as high as you can go. Can we move it to land first, at least, so that way it doesn't like swim yeah, away? Yeah, put it in, in like water. a little uh, jar sure, of yeah. water. He will, he will fly down and grab it, and it will be his pet snail. Nice. Uh, nice. All right. Well, I guess the only bad thing is if you lose concentration, and then it will. Well, that's true. Do you want to wait? Do you want to have your concentration so... held up for a whole hour? Is the thing. Uh, Cause he'll let's fly it up right now. Drop like, it. Let's have on the other let's one. Let's fly it up. Let's drop it on the other up. one. Yeah. Okay. No, no, don't drop in the water. Just drop it no, like no, no, on the, the shore. Water. Draw it like on the land. Like have him aim for like these guys right here. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Sure. Okay. But but account for like the wind. The wind is very. <laughs> oh my important, gosh. Right? Yeah. Well, he's like he's like no, I can't no... fly, I can't fly too high that if I have to account for the wind, there's a storm. <clears throat> I mean. I thought there was no science no. in D D. Come on. Oh. Right. I mean. Cat Yaru knows science. If you want to give it to the science cat, Cat Yaru can help. All right, so plan, I'm gonna. All right, I don't cap. I don't cap my damage. So he flies a thousand feet up there and he go. drops this thing. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna take a hundred d6 points of damage. Uh, here we go. Okay. Uh, as it lands on the beach, there is a thunderous explosion, and gore and chunks of shark fly everywhere. Uh, blood joins the rain as it rains down and soaks the Sahawagan, who are thrown into a absolute fury. Uh, the remaining shark would leave if it was not being controlled by evil uh, Aquaman. Because it's like fuck that. <laughs> uh, it is going to uh, beach itself and just sort of breathe slash smash into the wall, uh, trying to push the wall out of the way and free up areas here. But it is uh, its morale is definitely low. It would leave if it could. Do you have any other thing to do with this last remaining shark? Because uh, <laughs> oh jeez, yeah, what's that? Do you have the spell slot for it? I mean, uh, I feel like at this point, lightning bolt sounds good. Okay. So who's yeah. got a lightning bolt? Are you going to... Oh, I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll okay. pop up. All right. You pop up out of the sand, and you got to chuck a lightning bolt at it. Yeah. And roll All 20 right. has been really slow for me today. So we'll it's <laughs> also, we have like 7,000 things on this map. Uh, so it gets a 19. I think it's going to make the save. Uh, It'll make so it. Give me that damage. Yeah. So let's see. Um, 86. Let me just roll that. All right. It's rolling. It might show up at some point. Okay. Um, these creatures are possessed of a tremendous amount of health. Uh, so 333, three one, or 331 damage, obviously more than enough to uh, destroy them. Uh, but the lightning bolt is definitely going to deteriorate. it. Um, yeah. So there it takes... 20, 20 yeah. It takes 12, well, and then it's going to roll, roll back into the water unless somebody's got something else they want to do with it. While it's beached. If at any point you want to engage it, uh, let me know. Are, there, are these like super I, rare? Do we think they have a lot of these? That's the real question. <laughs> uh, they are uh pretty rare. They're pretty rare. Yeah. Okay. I I I think we should engage it. Like I okay. I think 
Otherwise, it's just gonna kill everyone over in every three rounds. It's just gonna keep killing. I everyone. mean, yeah, if I smash again like we did the last one. Yeah, I mean, you could try. Yeah, you could try again. Honestly, these waves are designed to either uh, kill all of your NPCs and trap you on this island because you won't have enough crew to escape, uh, right. or, or uh, burn away your resources, or and I guess and or burn away your resources before the tougher Sahagan show up. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll polymorph it. All right, uh, it will try with its magic resistance to avoid it. Uh, yeah. 28, because the magic resistance. All right. Yeah, yeah. All right, it's going to roll back into the water. Uh, ah. it... All right. Let me know if you want to gauge it. We'll gauge it. Otherwise, yeah, it's just it's just more madness as these things kind of rush about. Wow. Uh, now that the wall has been busted, they are going to try and make their way uh, through the wall and start heading up the beach. These horrible, sickening radiants. This pile of corpses. There's so many corpses in the water. Oh my god, it's disgusting. I'm gonna, it's like, uh, yeah. I'm gonna bury myself back into the uh, sand. By the way. <laughs> okay, summoning your hermit crab nature. You bury yourself yep. deep in the sand. Uh, uh, assuming, crash. Assuming we engage it in combat, that will kind of slow down time, right? So oh, that will slow down time for sure. Yeah. Okay. So all this other fighting will happen. You know very slowly as you guys are sure i'm trying to keep things moving quickly because again yeah, yeah. it would be like seven, 17 hours of combat if we uh took okay. into account all the different forces the npcs and all that there are enough sahaugan that the ones that you don't see are the ones that your allies are constantly gunning down like their guns are just smoking with heat from the amount of bullets that they're firing to try to fight these things uh illyria there you do need a new crew to take over for this cannon to get it back uh, in the fray. Okay, uh, I'll, <clears throat> I'll just send Spencer to go find two people to 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 come help on this uh, cannon. All right, fair enough. Spencer will go around honking at people and trying to drag them over towards the cannon. Uh, Spencer, beloved mascot of the crew, um, two people will go and take over. Just wanna crash I'm gonna oh, go ahead okay no go ahead uh, so my my vote is the next thing that shows up I think we should engage it I think we as a group could burn entirely fast before it kills all of our crew and I could do sure, yeah. interruption to like trap it in a spot maybe and then we could uh, go from there but that's just my vote that's what I think we should do so yeah I was yeah agreed I was gonna cast sacred or not sacred right but um shield of faith and uh, get myself like 24 AC and then I was gonna charge these guys over here all right i am going to place the shark of the gia blair uh at one of the four sections so the northeast the northwest the southwest or the southeast part of the island so wherever you think it's going to beach itself next to attack go ahead and place yourselves uh, there can i actually have them shift this cannon to face the other way so that way we can have some of that fire oh yeah they will they will totally some. turn that cannon around for you all right so go ahead and, and if you are engaging it put yourself in the general area of either the top left the top right the bottom left or the bottom right so that when we roll into initiative uh we know where you actually are in the battle if, if I saw, yeah, if I saw all these guys pouring in, I would probably mm -hmm. head that direction. Okay. To kind of stem them off coming in. Like uh, before the battle start, I'd like prep uh, Shadow Moil on myself and then just start hacking. Okay. Uh, so whichever corner you think it is going to pop up in, go ahead and put yourself in that general vicinity. I feel like it wouldn't want to spray on its own things, right? It's highly intelligent, so it probably, probably bottom, won't go over bottom. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the Hopefully, right. you think? I don't know. I mean, it has tried to jump up here uh, before the bottom left to uh, kind of spray a wave onto the roof. That was mm -hmm. one of its previous tactics. Well, that was the tactic of the other one that you killed, so... Whether or not this one will use the same tactics, unknown. 
Yeah, so if it already broke in through here, if it's like a siege weapon, then if it already broke through the bottom left, then the last place to do it is break through the ship again. The bottom right, I mean, it'll be the last place to break through, I think, right? All right. Uh, I'm going to count down. Go ahead and lock in the general vicinity of your, uh, wherever your miniature is when we start combat. That's where it is. So, 10, 9, 8. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can hit from like any area, so it's okay. All right, <laughs> so that's it. Don't move area. your don't move your minis anymore. It's over. It's over. All right. Uh, roll yourselves into initiative. It was going for the boat. <laughs> uh. All right. Compared to like Sinesis, the poison kiss, the shark ate nothing to you. The say nothing. All right. Now, is long? I don't know how many times I'm gonna I'm gonna have to say this to D D groups during mass combats. As long as you don't interact with the NPCs, that is to say, yours and theirs, they won't interact with you. Uh huh. Okay. I wanted to make sure that that information is fully out there because every time that a mass combat happens in any of my groups there's at least one person that's like goes full Gimli the Dwarf they're just like <laughs> well I'm just gonna wreck all these uh, regular dudes and then everyone else is off trying to fight the boss and then the one person's like wrecking, wrecking dudes uh, so I want to make sure that you guys know that you do not have to wreck small dudes that's why you have your own small dudes just just putting that out there um, alright uh and we're off to the races. Nikolai, you're up. Um, Crash, I mm -hmm. think I apologize for this in advance. Okay. Um, I'm going to... Can I animate, uh, I don't know, 10 shells? Yeah, that's fine. You don't have to apologize for using your spells. Let's see. Yeah, 10 shells, small, tiny objects. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Um... Here you go. Um, they're going to show up pretty close to uh, old Sharky face. Okay, well, they're yours and your responsibility, so move wherever you need to go, baby. Oh, oh yeah, they're, they're running in. All right. Okay. There um, they're going to, they're just going to start chopping. All right, let me get those 10 attacks. Trying to hit arm class of 16. Sounds like you're rolling, but let me know if you want me to roll. Oh no, they're your they're your they're your things, dude. Like you can pick right. on uh, them. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. My All right. my retribution to this spell is that <laughs> I wash my hands of it. So if you want it, the if you, you wanted the puppy, you walk the puppy. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I, like, I, I, oh, I, I, I dad ain't really gonna like yeah, it. dad ain't gonna yeah. walk the puppy for you. All right, so. All right. Good thing uh, I got this uh, calculator open as we move into the 10 plus levels. Uh, all right, so <laughs> let's see. Miss, miss, hit. Uh, let's one, see. One more, hit. Hit. All right. Anything else? I think that's that's only nine. Yeah, we got one oh, more stab. One more stab. All right. Sorry, I was getting too. Uh, I was getting too excited. It's a lot. It's a big responsibility to have ten hamsters. All right. All right. Yes. Uh, all right. So it takes some damage uh, as shells rise up off the the beach and begin to pelt it. All right. I'm gonna um, find a place to duck. I'm gonna one, two, three. I'm gonna go back to my hidey hole for a little bit. Okay. Fair enough. Um. And yeah, I'm good. Okay, this creature is going to uh, kind of force its bulk a bit. Blah! Uh, and it is going to just breathe up towards the battle bits uh, right here. It's, it's just sort of like, anchor, you know, angles itself back and just blast a tidal wave up onto the roof. All right. Let's see what happens. Uh, let's see. We'll go with uh, sideways. Yeah, that works. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, blast. 
That works. All right. So if you are in that, uh, here comes freezing breath. Uh, fifty-seven points of cold damage. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's one, two, three. Uh, and then the recently deceased dwarf, and then, uh, the cutie, and then the other cutie on the ground. Got it. Uh, here we go. Uh, one, two, uh, three, four, five. All right. Uh, none of your crew members make the save. Uh, it is horrifying, Skull, as you hear their bones break and shatter from the magical cold and the force of the tidal waves, uh, that push their bodies past you and Illyria and over uh, the side into the water. Food for the Sahaugan soldiers who are working so hard today, trying their best to support our troops. Alright. Uh, let's see. So, I get uh, pushed too, right? If you failed, yeah, you get pushed 20 feet. Can I use the reaction to try to grab onto the wall? <laughs> Aw, that would be so cool. <laughs> can I use uh, my reaction to grab her? You can use your reaction to try to grab her, because friendship's more powerful than anime. <laughs> there, I said it. <laughs> uh, give me give me a save, uh, dexterity saving throw, Skull, to see if you could react fast enough to grab her. Oh, it's so beautiful. Uh, yeah, you grab her, and it actually turns into, like, an interpretive dance type deal, where she, like, you know, kind of, like, almost falls, but then you pull her back to you, like, the whole deal. It's very cool. Uh, if you guys are interested in physics that don't get to happen to D&D, when the wave crashes over uh, Blanca Orf uh, Orfneo, uh, they are actually launched uh, up this ramp, like a fucking stick skateboard move, uh, and then they hit the side of this wall and then crash down to the ground. Uh, it's pretty horrible. Um, on top of the fact that the, what, the northwest part of the island is just drenched in gore from you guys exploding a fucking whale uh this is a mess uh all right that is the creature's turn it is definitely going to uh try its best to flop back into the water but it's not going to get very far so it is in the water but it is still there um and you guys can still see it but it does have some cover from being uh, down in the water but it is still obviously there and available to target. Thagram to you. I'm going to run up after I see the, the cold like rush, rush over the tower and I know Illyria is there. I'm going to kind of panic, panic, look for her. Uh, mm -hmm. and it's, I, I can, can see, see her. her. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because it's a very, it's, remember, it's only a 15 foot high roof, which is part of why it's, these guys have been so successful at launching tidal waves over it. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm going to cast yeah. heal on Illyria. Okay, nice. Oh my gosh, thank you. <laughs> Alright, uh, you still have a bonus action, Thogram, if you wanted uh -huh. to use it. Uh, nope, good. Okay, uh, Illyria, to you. Uh, I think No, sorry, 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 yeah. Turi. Uh, Turi, to you. Um, I am going to try to polymorph it again. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so you're gonna... Oh, sorry, that's wrong. Yeah, you can see it from the, the roof. Got to move over to the edge. See this little fin poking out. Uh, here we go. Uh, magic resistance. And go. Uh, it fails. It is polymorphed. Um, uh, it is in the water, I'm... though. So what okay. do you turn it into? Um, it... I will turn it into um how far under the water is it? Uh, I mean you can see the fin so it's right right by the surface. Okay. I will turn it into a seagull. Okay. Okay. Uh that is a smart move. Uh it has the brain of a seagull. Uh, so it just starts uh, flying around looking for hot dogs, uh, as is its uh, genetic uh, obligation. Uh, just checking one last thing. 
Okay, so you'd have to use all your speed to run along the battlements to get close enough, but you could still do it. So you'd okay. be Thanks. probably running past uh, uh, Amy and the cannon and get to about there, and you'd be able to do it. All right. Uh, it turns into a seagull and begins to fly about. All right. A seagull, though, is a much tougher prey than a snail. Uh, um, Eben, I like I to tell Eben myself. The... Yeah. <laughs> uh, Eben Fang did not roll in because he's technically an NPC and you guys are grown-ups now. But if you'd like him to roll in, he could. Uh, I assumed he's in the background helping the other NPCs uh, fight stuff because there were so many NPCs that I figured, you know, he was helping the NPCs out. Um, I could roll him in if you want, but... Uh, I think we could. Okay. Uh, let's see, I don't have a seagull, but we do have a um, bird person, so we'll use that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so bird person on their turn is obviously not happy about being in the water, and it's going to take flights and start looking for hot dogs. Okay. Uh, strong turn to re, concentration in effect. Illyria, saved from being blasted off the side of the battlement. What are you going to do? Uh, kind of just like <laughs> hold on to skull and like look up and like thank you. Oh my gosh, and uh, cast. M I don't know that thing is done. So we were just going after that one, right? Yeah, I mean, if you are confident that in an hour's time it will have flown far away from this battle, um, because it has the brain of a seagull. I don't think a seagull would honestly want to be in a war zone. I mean, I know some seagulls that would because there's a lot of free food laying around on the beach. Uh, but if you guys feel like you could you could wait out an hour, um, I don't think anything's going to attack the seagull, especially if it starts flying away. So a seagull was a very smart move for the polymorph. Okay, I will uh, just keep a lookout for the casters and. Okay. Uh, in case they it. try to dispel magic that they're polymorph. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Uh, Spencer, to you. Ooh. Spencer is going to jump down and do rescue will hound mode. Okay. Uh, to try and... Did these guys die or... Oh, they yeah, they were... They were oh, they died? Yeah, their bones got frozen and shattered. And yeah, that's the whole thing. Did Sorry, I'll put some little... This yeah. one died too? Nope, okay. she's good. She's good. She just watched in horror as uh, Orfeo got launched up the ramp but then smashed into the side of the, uh, the place. But, you know, you guys have a good grief counseling um, set up in your <laughs> HR department. It's like, it's all good. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay, uh, he will jump down to her then. And, okay. Um, he'll dash to get to her and then on his next turn he'll try and pull her back to safety okay fair enough uh skull to you uh, i wouldn't know anything before we're looking up so i'm gonna go over here and look and see if any of those guys seem alive uh they seem horribly twisted in uncomfortable, unliving ways. Um, okay. Already, there are, you know, Rando, Sahaugan, who are nomming on them. Alright, yeah. I don't want to medicate and it, though. Maybe so. a couple of Chul, too, because they like eating people. There you go. The Chul looks up and waves at you. It's mouth full of Sailor. So. Uh, right, so besides that, I don't want to metagame it, so I'll just, I'll just dodge, I guess. I don't know. Okay, fair enough. Um, honestly, we're going to finish out the round. That'll be the end of the session. Uh, is Yeah, I mean, the creature, again, is a seagull. It's going to get the fuck out of there. So by the time it by the time it gets back, the battle should be over. Um, also, if it's away from the Sahaugan's mind control, it might just go and live a, live a happy life somewhere else. So you may have saved this poor creature's life. Aww. So as a, as a neutral evil creature, it will remember that. So, um, Pharos, finish us up. Uh, if everything's like handled, like he'll just like hold like the dog room and just kind of like I mean I have these all these I mean, yeah I have all these like, Sahaugan like he's like staring them down. He's not gonna interact yet. 
Mm -hmm. I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want those problems yet. Right, right, right. So you're just dramatically posturing the uh, in front of the wave of Sahaugan that's getting ready to wash over you. Got it. All right. Um, on that note, with the largest threat from this wave neutralized, you guys have finished this wave. Time will speed back up. You'll clash against basic bitch Sahaugan. And then the next wave will attack. They want that damn trident. Uh, and we will continue this next week. Nice. Oof. Ooh, boy. Wow. Some, cool, uh, some very cool ideas. Some very smart spellcasting tonight. So it was very enjoyable. Thank you, guys. Uh, I'll take you back to your start page for now. Um, announcements. Uh, 31st, that is the month. Uh, Five Room Dungeon is going to um, close. It's an uh, actual physical prize this time around. So um, there's been some very cool entries. If you uh, are feeling like you, you can't do it, I'm uh, here to tell you you could do it. Um, it's, it's fun. Um, I ran my dungeon twice. I enjoyed both uh, times that I ran it. Um, I look forward to having some time to run some of the entries. I think they all look really fun. Or playing in some of the entries if people decide to run them. Um, also, the West Marches game that starts in October uh, is going to have sort of a delve mode, uh, basically. So it's like a perfect platform to run a five-room dungeon or play in a short one-shot type dungeon uh, situation. Because there'll be ongoing... Um, quest lines but then there'll also be lots of one shot quest lines that you could do as well um extra life this was a extra life tabletop weekend uh conti uh started his own extra life and joined my team and managed to raise 525 dollars yesterday nice. uh running awesome. his uh yeah running his game uh, we played it in foundry for six hours um I never got a higher initiative than six, uh, <laughs> but I did get, I did at level Good. six, get a, I, did a, I did at level like. six, get a critical hit for 72 points of damage. So that was oh. pretty cool. Yeah, Ooh. that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, thank you, Grave Cleric, for that. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> and he he's, uh, he's actually going to start a campaign eventually. I think when Acquisition Incorporated is over, he's going to start... Uh, Madness at Garbmore Abbey, which is one of my favorite D and D box sets of all time. So um, that's definitely a, that's definitely a game to check out. It's a very fun um, sandbox dungeon, I guess is the best way to describe it. Uh, it's like a it's like a big big dungeon, but it's not all dungeon. There's like outdoor areas and social encounters and stuff. Uh, it's nowhere near the size of like Mad Mage or anything crazy like that. Um, but uh, that's a lot of fun. And whoa, so much stuff going on lately. Oh my god. Does anybody have any other announcements uh that's going on in the community that you want to share with people? Uh yeah, I'm gonna be running one or two games in September. Um, depending on I'm I'm, I'm working on prep for both. Um but everyone's more than welcome to, to join them. Um try, I'm gonna probably put like a poll out to see what'd be a good day. I would like to continue kind of the story I had with those previous characters, but if not, more than welcome to have more characters. Uh, it, <laughs> there may or may not be spaceships. Um, mm -hmm. That's a secret. <laughs> that sounds fun. <laughs> um, but yeah. Oh, that does remind me. Yeah, there won't be any Odyssey or Skull and Shackles in September because I'm taking the whole month to learn Foundry and migrate those two games over. Uh, we're not going to go to Foundry. We're too far along at this point to move to a new house. Um, plus, I mean, Roll20, we put it, through, put it through its paces tonight. I feel like it it survived. Um, but it's it's going to be a great t uh, month to try and run some one-shots or some short uh, mini-series adventures because uh, there'll be two groups with nothing to do. Um, so they might be running games or they might be looking for games to join. So if you... Uh, if you have time in September, that might be a great month to kind of try running a game or joining a game. All right. Uh, oh, and then the last thing, the extra life thing. If you do want to make your own team, 
please do. I only enter every year to try to earn a thousand dollars. Uh, that's all. That's really only my goal every year. I just increase the goal after I meet it because that's what you're supposed to do with fundraising stuff, but I'm only really there to earn a thousand dollars. Um, so anybody else that wants to do it, you can earn like medals. And they sent me like a fancy D 20 this month for raising some money. And it's like the size of a golf ball and it's solid metal and it's blue enamel and it's really sexy. Um, so they have lots of cool prizes that you can um, win while you are um, raising money for, for charity and playing games at the same time. So it's kind of just like a win-win, win-win-win situation. Um, and then I'm going to, I have, I had pins, I have pins ordered and stickers and shirts. Uh, so anybody that joins my extra life team, uh, with their extra life, uh, you can unlock prizes from me. I'll send them to your house, but I'm only going to send them at the very end because because <laughs> I, I I hate dealing with the post office. So, uh, yeah, I prayed on a evil monkey paw that they'd shut down the post office. And then, much like much like a lot of my evil monkey paw wishes, 2020 was like, I hear you, baby. I hear you. Whatever you need, <laughs> yeah, I'll make it happen for you. Not like this. Not like this. Um, yeah. There's so a, a, there's apparently like a six mile meteor that might hit us like uh, right before the election. That's no, cool. it's six Just, feet. Yeah. It's not six point no, five feet. I think it was six miles, right? No. I think it's six point five feet, and there's like a point four one percent chance of it hitting us the day before the election. But there's definitely, yeah. Yeah, I've stopped. I've stopped believing in luck or uh, in, in percentages a long time ago. It's just luck. That's all that. That's all that matters. So yeah. Uh, okay. So um, sorry to talk you guys ear off. It's just so much stuff is going on on the on the server right now. So I wanted to make sure I get all out there. Um, hope you guys have a safe and healthy week. And if you need me for anything, at me. That's the best way to get my attention on Discord because it's so big and complicated now. And I'll see you guys next week. Yay! Awesome. Right, guys, thank you. you. <laughs> Sounds good. Bye. Good night, everybody. Good night, y'all.